All right. For the uh the man of the hour, he needs no introduction, but this is the first brother that I felt confident enough and I felt that he was uh somebody I could trust to take me to Africa safely, securely, right, and get me back in one piece, you know. I, I ran across this brother on uh, Brother Dinus show. Shout out to Brother Dinus. And the brother was, he came across so sincere. And I said to myself, you know what? He left his email at the end of that broadcast. This was four years ago. I emailed him. He left my phone number. He called me. And I said, I, I, I do loads going to Atlanta. Next load I get. Uh, I want to come there and meet you face to face to see who I'm giving my money to. And uh, I requested a, a load to go to the ATL right behind that. I went there, called the brother. He came. We went to a Jamaican vegan place, chopped it up, man, like, like we had been knowing each other ever since childhood. And I felt so confident. I brought my laptop. He brought his laptop. And we used the, the restaurant's Wi-Fi. We exchanged the money and two months later i was in africa so i want to definitely always keep this brother in my prayers and uh, if you guys are thinking about other countries this is the man to go with uh senegal gambia uh ghana definitely ghana because he has I mean, he has too many connections in ghana uh zanzibar south africa and now liberia on the list and i plan to be on that liberian trip uh next year and uh i'm gonna keep it my son too so we're gonna be because we definitely because right next door then we'll probably stay a little longer and go to sierra leone but with no further ado let me bring on brother bomani let me add him there you go i'm doing all right family uh greetings brother uh, there you everything go. looks vibrant love the sierra leone uh flag and everything Go ham. Greetings, brother. Yes. Absolutely. We are live Absolutely. Yes. Yes, I see. So you got I the gave a little uh, introduction on. Yeah, exactly, man. You know, I gotta put my flag up. You know what I mean? My 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 dual flags. But Absolutely. I gave the people a little yeah, a little right uh, introduction on how we met. Exactly. I gave uh the people a little introduction on how we met and how uh I started going to Africa. So for folks who don't know in my audience, which I'm sure a lot of people do know, uh, just kind of lay out what got you interested in going to Africa and then what made you decide to just take over the helm and then start taking brothers and sisters back to the continent. Just give them a little synopsis on, on uh, what brought you to all these uh, wonderful things. All right, uh, Greetings family. This is Bomani Tamba, and I want to share with you this, my evolution of uh, connecting to Africa in uh, several minutes as uh, best as possible. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to take you back to the early uh, 2003. And uh, I was about uh, 25 around that time. And I started getting interested in Africa roots and culture. You know, so a few of my brothers uh, introduced me to some of the books, you know, like Destruction of a Black Civilization and, you know, work my way to the Garvey books and Blueprint for Black Power and so on. This, you know, infusing myself into the world of our roots and culture. And while you're studying Africa and you're learning the African roots and culture and things in America, one thing always stand out is Africa. You know, that's the main equivalent in the, the situation in Africa. Uh, you're studying about it, you're connecting it, you're talking about it. So the practical thing is to go to Africa. So sometimes you talk to certain brothers and, you know, you talk to certain people and they talk about Africa, but that's not a part of their priority. And I mean, you know, everybody have their own priorities. It's what it is, not knocking anybody else. But it's like, these are things that we're not practically thinking about. And like we talk about the Africa that we want to go to and you know, all different conversations about Africa. But then I started realizing that we need to spend time doing research and traveling to the different countries and building relationships and putting the things in place, you know, the tours, the investment, uh, the certain relationship, building an energy to where government can offer you residency, citizenship, they can change the laws of how things work in the country and kind of 
connect with the diaspora on that level, that organic level or that natural level or the level that we need to connect on. Uh, so that's the main thing that you're thinking about. Uh, not saying I'm thinking about all those things at that time, uh, but I was able to start traveling to Africa in 2004 uh, when I was 26. The first trip I went with some friends that, or associates of mine that work with the, at the airlines uh, there in Atlanta. And uh, we, we literally just went to the, went to the Gambia uh, excuse me, went to Senegal. Uh, we later on went to the Gambia another time. But once we were in uh, Senegal, it was just my first time. And some of them, it was their first time. And it, was at that, it, it wasn't an organized trip. So it was something that you were able to just get a feel out and just, it just let it just connect with you whichever way. Because there's no, there's no set schedule. There's no organized itinerary. And I agreed to go with some friends, even though I knew the situation. They didn't have anything worked out or organized, but I was just excited because a month before that, I paid for a trip to go to Egypt, and that was 2004. So uh, that's say it was April 2004. Cause this was March 2004 for the Senegal uh, journey. So literally a month after, but even though I paid for that one first, so I ended up enjoying that journey and end up just getting me in the mind of just being in Africa. So when I went to Egypt in uh, April 2004 with uh, Dr. Renaud Karashidi. Uh, that was an, another just incredible energy. And also I recorded the Senegal journey, but also I record this one in more details to where I even put it up on my YouTube channel uh, several months ago or a few months, months ago. Uh, and this was recorded literally in 2004 on VHS. For those who know what that is, that's those big videotapes. And then later on, I converted it to DVD. And then now I have it uh, in a digital format to where it's on YouTube, where you click on play hall and they play the six hours of video videos that I end up just editing. That means I shot more videos than, than anything else. So I started getting into the mode right there of traveling to Africa on an organized tour, even though that wasn't my tour with Dr. Renaud Karashidi, having someone speak prolific and having organized tour guides and a tour bus and us being on a, a, you know, a ship that literally took us from one part of uh, Egypt to another part, us doing all different kinds of things. Uh, so, you know, Literally, I started building that energy for the, the documentation and experience in Africa, which is two things. Because, you know, if you go back to you know wherever you're from in the, you know in in a neighborhood, I, I'll say, and and you start telling people, yeah, I've been to Africa and everything. They're gonna start looking at you. They, you lying, man. You ain't been to the Africa, you know. And it's, you know, I'm not saying that everybody's gonna say that, but my point to everybody is like, I wanted to document everything, so I started traveling to Africa. Never had, never took up a camcorder before in my life. And never, you know, even never really used a computer before in my life, and that opened that world up to me. To you know, because before that I was just doing aircraft maintenance. That was what I did for so many years in my career, uh, from military to civilian. Even though I was still young, I started at 18. But literally, this that created a new career for me. And from there on, I started going to different countries in Africa, using my flight benefits to even buying tickets and traveling. To in 2006, went to the country that did it all. I uh, went to Ghana in December 2006 and literally just went there with a few of, um, a few people who signed out with a journey from our company called Africa for the Africans that we started literally a few months before that in October of 2006 and then said that we we're going to just do organized tours based on going to so many countries beyond even just uh, Senegal and Egypt. You know, later on, went to South Africa, went to Kenya, went to the Gambia. Uh, so that build up the energy, those five countries and Ghana making six. So from December 2006 to December 2021, I've done 20 journeys to Ghana alone. And in those 15 year time span, ranging from eight people on one, the smallest group to 43 on the biggest group. And we have covered land investment, living, doing business, uh, roots culture, museum and circle places, nightlife, shopping, networking. This understanding and connecting to all of the elements of this the country itself over that time frame. And in between that time frame, we've connected to other countries like Togo, Benin. And now in the modern day era, I've added Tanzania, South Africa, Senegal, the Gambia, and now Liberia. And that, that along with Ghana makes six countries now on the rotating itinerary. Uh, and all those countries are actually on the itinerary for next year. Uh, literally, so been able to just build up an energy and then sharing it. So we just have over 3,000 videos on YouTube, literally videos that deal, deal with from conference call to showing you this us in a club somewhere or showing you us having dinner or us out of 
the museum is circle places at business conference on our land, talking about opportunities in Africa, just like covering all spectrums of us traveling to Africa, living, doing business, connecting, networking, and creating a whole new world where if someone asks me what's the end game, I would say there's not necessarily an end game, but what we'd be able to do from here on since we're building the foundation, we'll be able to just acquire more land and build communities, build towns, build investment, build all the things that we don't really get into in America. We don't really get into the industrializing and the building, you know, and things like that. We're more of the consumer type. So this changes the, the dynamics of those of us who you know wanted to just try to evolve. Like, you know, it's one of those things I tell people that, you know, I can't get stuck at one path. You have to keep on evolving. Like people say, you, you, you talk about the military so much, like you, you love it. And I was like, it's a path for my growth. Just like working on the airlines, just like hanging out with uh, conscious groups of people doing study groups and things like that. And now, you know, more of us are talking about getting citizenships in country, building their homes, building investment, building business. So that the evolution of just making that one trip, making that one move, open into Africa uh, and things like that. And I just appreciate the fact that um, I wasn't difficult to anybody that mentioned it to me. Uh, it's one of those things where you're going to be skeptical because it's one of those things where you hear so much misconception about Africa. But the beautiful thing about it, brother, is that me, you, people like Dinus, uh, I have a bunch of other people there on there, on YouTube, Mat Matrell on a Mission, you know, you know, even our brother Go Black that traveled with us in, uh, to Ghana in November 2018, out there. And all of us are doing one main and most important thing. We're all telling and sharing our own experience on the continent of Africa, of being you know, conscious brothers that want to see conscious brothers and sisters that want to see a future for our people. And we do it, just doing it the best way we can do it organically. And that's what I'm telling people, even when I'm trying to evolve into land acquisition and uh, land development and everything, it's like you want to wish those of us that's going out there the best that way, because when people like myself get access to anything, the first thing I'm going to do, and I'm opening up for our brothers, like, like your family, yo, we were lined up to about Africa, join me. And that's what I've been pushing since, since day one, like, like family. Let, let us share with you what Africa is about so you can literally this, uh, hear from people who have your best interests and people who want to see us build together. So all of those uh, journeys that we've taken and all these network and these connections and literally have just forged this path now so we, that we can speak confidently about what we're doing in Africa because we are the expert now because we have done one thing beyond... There's more people that know more about Africa than me and have way more knowledge and many other things. But the one thing that they don't have is the experience. And ultimately, at the end of the day, that's what matters. Because when anyone comes to Africa with us, like you and I was talking about, that our energy and focus can be to build a world of Liberia and Sierra Leone from 1822 to 2022, a 200 year reconnection. And uh, you know, I know we're all over different countries, we're in Ghana, South Africa, Tanzania, but I'm telling people, you know, listen to from two good brothers that know what they're talking about. These two countries, Sierra Leone and Liberia, is going to be the face of Africa. And the reason why they're going to be the face of Africa, because they're quote unquote people have underplayed them as whatever things they want to consider with, with, with civil war or poverty or two of the most or two of the poorest country. All those things mean nothing. The most important thing is those of us who see the vision come together and start investing and connecting to the country. And the tourism is a good way to get into the country. And then you're gonna see the real of it. What you're gonna see is opportunities beyond your wildest belief. Because the thing of it is, if you don't jump on these ground grassroots opportunity, like I was in Ghana telling people about these things in 2006, and you know, I didn't know nothing about business or investment or buying no land. And the best thing I could tell people to do is come with me and I'll take you to some people who know these things and show you certain things. Uh, so, but naturally, I personally missed out on a lot of investment with land. But you know, you don't, you know, you, you don't know these things. You don't know these things. It's not like it's just taught to us like that. So we're here to teach and share with everyone the vision of what we see based on the trends of all these other countries. Because brother, you and I have been to South Africa. You're not going to find the level of opportunities in Liberia and Sierra Leone as you. you know, you're not going to find the level of opportunities in, in South Africa as you're going to find in the countries like Liberia and Sierra Leone, because what you're going when you go to you know, like Johannesburg, you see all the highways and all the technology and even the airport, everything is just well developed. So if it's well developed, where are you really going to put your money to? And where 
where are you really going to buy land for like a few hundred dollars or a few thousand dollars? You know, those things are not going to exist. So South Africa is, is perfect for some people who want that high established market and they're going to go and say, hey, I'm going to spend three, four hundred thousand dollars on a house or I'm going to do certain things. But for those of us who want grassroots opportunity to where at the end of the day, when we finish investing, all of us as black people, those of us, the diaspora and those of us on the continent and whatever country, it's all of us. It's our black ownership. It's us together. You know what I mean? Naturally, you know what I mean? You already see the intermingling, the intermarriage and interconnection and everything. So you're telling people after, give us about a generation or two generation, we're all African national citizens. We're not all of these things, but if we don't make these moves and build the gap and make those connections and go to the country, spend some money, socialize, do certain things, no, no, nobody in Africa, no countries in Africa is going to look at us serious. They're going to say, you guys are just talking all this stuff from a distance, but you won't put your money where your mouth is and you won't put, you know, your investments and you won't do those things. And the first, the first thing they're going to say was like, well, these white folks are saying this, so why should we not go with them and deal with them? It's like, you guys saying that we shouldn't do this with them or we shouldn't do certain things, but then you're not playing your part. So I look at it as, you know, that... Uh, you know, we have to do our part to encourage everything else. And those of us from the diaspora, we have seen development. We have seen counties, states, countries, states, cities, and places develop in the last 20, 30 years. And then we had nothing to do with it. There's no, I've seen a world in Jamaica develop. You know, when we were in Kingston, we, we, you know, I was born in the 70s and Jamaica didn't look like the way it looked like. But all I know is that I was growing and the folks who invested, which is the rich white folks and Asians and other people who put their money together, you know, they did what they did and we missed out. So I think we pretty much missed out on everything, brother. So uh, we're also speaking to you about Africa from a standpoint of investment, a standpoint of just, hey, this is our motherland and we're welcome home because my brother is in Sierra Leone and he's been into other countries in Africa with us. And I can't tell you any situation that I don't feel like I'm welcome or I feel like we're targeted or I feel like there's a consistent issues. And honestly, that would make sense for us to go under those stress and things like that and keep on going and keep on with a smile and making videos and out in different places, showing us having a good time and having all of our crews there locally with us and everything. So family, this is as real as we can let you know from the videos. But if you want to get any better connection is, you know, you have to join one of these journeys, regardless of wherever you go with, join a journey and open your mind to this evolution. And remember, when you do go to one country, it's just one country out of 57 countries in Africa. Uh, so that's, it took me six countries to find a country that I can make business in, which is Ghana. And then now that I've learned that, I'm doubling back to other countries that I've been to before. But sometimes you may have to just make those moves and find different countries. So that's why we have so many countries on our itineraries, countries that we've all traveled to and we have experienced and we know people and have people there. So if you're trying to go somewhere, you go to one of those countries. If we're not even there doing a whole bunch of things, then we know we have people that we can connect you with. So just wanted to share that family as far as uh, our evolution or my evolution from going to this not knowing anything about Africa to this making that connection. And then it's been 18 straight years from 2004 to 2022 and getting ready to leave for Ghana in 11 days. Great, 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 great. That's what I'm talking about. See, this, this brother got a lot of energy, this lot of energy in order to put forth because, you know, I, I work with him behind the scenes or if something is going on, he may call me and just kind of give me a heads up. And I definitely can appreciate how much effort the brother has to put in because in order to, to facilitate and organize these trips, you, you don't have, you guys don't have no idea how many phone calls the brother has to make, how many emails, how many uh, uh, return calls. I mean, you have if he probably have to make at least four or five hundred calls to make these trips and he does it with no problem right because you're dealing with a whole bunch of individuals you got the airlines you got the hotels you got the the, the meals you got the excursions you got the the museums you got the 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 islands and and, and things dealing with waters that we got to account for you got money exchange, uh, you got the bus, you got to make sure people are hydrated. I mean, because a lot of us, you know, we're in these cold climates and we're not really used to high climates. So the brother has thought of everything 
if you if you have a a disability of some sort we make sure that he hires a few extra guys to help folks on the bus off the bus help folks you know um upstairs make sure all your luggage is taken care of i mean some of these things when we go on trips people kind of forget like uh all the things that you have to orchestrate in order to make a trip like this come uh to fruition so i definitely uh welcome uh the fact that i could go on a trip with him and i could just relax he's he's handled all of the stuff that i would normally worry about <laughs> so i could just sit back and relax you know what i'm saying make sure my clothes is iron i, I live in a carefree i just give me some sun get up in the morning go get me some mangoes off the side of the road or give me some coconuts you know what i mean and just look at the itinerary and then just get ready to go because i noticed something um when I go on trips, right, I just really want to just relax. I want somebody else to do the thinking for me. I want somebody else to plan everything. All I need to be told is what time to be ready. We're going to be ready at 8 o'clock. I'm going to set my alarm for 6.30. I'm going to get up so I ain't, the, the, ain't nobody waiting on me because that's a pet peeve for people who are setting up these uh, type of tours. You know, if you have a group of folks, everybody has to participate and make sure that we able to get in the itinerary so if he, if a person said eight o'clock set your alarm for 6 30 or even six o'clock give yourself a chance to get up iron your clothes if you want to iron give you enough chance to get you some breakfast get you your coffee right do your little exercise if you want to do exercise and be ready to go then once you get to the bus you want to bring a few things with this is like some of the things that i uh think about when people go on these trips, you want to bring bug spray. You want to bring uh, some ibuprofen. You might want to bring uh, um, some Benadryl, right? You might want to bring some some wet wipes. You might want to bring some hand, hand sanitizer and put it in a little bag. The brother usually, and I do the same, uh, supply you with a little drawstring bag. You can put that stuff in that bag, put it on your back. Uh, some of the places we go, they may be out of uh, uh, toilet paper, bring you some, some wipes or bring your own paper with you. Just some of the things that make the trips go a lot smoother. Uh, we usually handle a lot of the airfare, right? So for folks who haven't flown, cause I've experienced people who decide to like get the African bug and I want to go to Africa, right? They book a trip and realize it never been on a plane before. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> hey, that's amazing, right? You never been on a plane before. You, you hey, you you stepped off the porch for real. <laughs> you know what I mean? So to navigate the airport, to you know, if a gate changes or something like that, it's good to have a, a tour leader that's there, boots on the ground, so you can see them in the airport. They can assist you if it's your first time or even if, it, if you haven't flown in a while assist you on making sure you make make your plane tell you about your luggage how to check your two bags the carry on what the what the weight of the luggage should be uh even bring it to what you should pack right you should kind of pack light you want a good tour leader to assist you especially if you haven't made these type of trips before uh Make sure you got your visa stuff together. Make sure you got your passport stuff together. Um, make sure you, you're on top of your COVID situation. It's a lot that goes into these trips. I don't think people really, uh, but money give us the credit that we deserve for all this work that we do. They don't, I don't think they really understand how much work is really involved in making sure our brothers and sisters get back to the continent, get there safely and, um, and really enjoy themselves. So do you want to like expound on some of those things I talked about that we kind of forget about and we just think that they're going to take care of themselves, but they really don't take care of themselves. So you want to just kind of go off into that, like some of the things I may have missed on the little small details that people miss out on. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, uh, preparation and things like that. So one of the main focus is always this, the number one, make commitment early so you can have time ready and available to this, basically get yourself prepared and no last minute things. 
So outside of just getting the visas out the way, which is, there's no visa that's difficult. You just have to follow the directions. It was given to you and ask for help if things are not clear. But uh, beyond that, uh, literally work in a situation to where, you know, you're there on a journey, so you're, you're there for several days. So people ask me what to wear. And, you know, I usually have a preparation list of this. It covers this many different things. But at the same time, too, uh, what you want to do is just pack a little bit of everything. But it's... It's something that you have to be clear with that itinerary. So if you, we talk about hiking and, and going across water and things like that, you know, these are things that you just naturally have to just say, hey, I'm going to bring a little bit of everything. Um, you know, you're going to you know, a country where you have islands and beaches, so swimwear. You're going out to ceremonies and nightlife. You know, you, you, you know, put some clothes that, you know, for nightlife. You're going to be moving around in the daytime. You're going to be very comfortable and relaxed, you know. And so you want to bring, bring those kind of things. But uh, beyond that, uh, as far as just um, the level of organizing and putting things together, um, you're just basically just trying to just, number one, just trying to find out who is traveling with you or not. Is, that's um, one of the more difficult things. But uh, deposits usually solve that. But even that isn't always a guaranteed thing that everybody paid deposit is going to show up. Uh, so you're consistently just trying to work the numbers. And then the people that you have in the country, you know, you have to make sure things are clear with them. That way they, they meet you at all of the pickup points, have everything in place and so on. But it's a whole bunch of coordination. And it's just like any uh, you know business or any skill or anything. You put time into it and learn to do it. And most of what you're doing, people are not going to know or understand it. But uh, administratively and technically, that's what I specialize in here at this office, uh, getting those things done. So helping people from this all aspect of things and it's making time to just work it out. If someone needs to come here or do a video call or a group call, if they're not available for a public call, you know, you just make yourself available, but you're, as you offer a schedule, your life also has to be dedicated to that schedule. So I'll put uh, two years of schedule. So I'm not going any. So that time frame, I have to be there at that schedule and I have to just make sure my life is clear. So number one, even that commitment right there, and then be available throughout the day because you have people in different time zones in different countries. So someone may call you three, four, four o'clock in the morning, and it's what it is. If you can't answer, you don't answer. If not, then you just take a message and communicate back with them and just have those things worked out. And if you just need help, you just get help. But uh, it's just something that, you know, once you build, you know, build a skill to where I can just literally just do these things and just make it work to where what you're doing is putting things together that way you can offer the most competitive package because you're basically manually creating everything on your own and things that I know. There's no tour guide somewhere or no travel agency. I mean, some of the people that uh, do these business, they do use certain aspects of things, but myself literally just believe that, you know, you know, you can create a better deal for the people that you're doing business with by handling certain things. And so we have a simple way to do all kinds of things from flights to accommodation. Sometimes, it's easy to set up a hotel book and just so I text in the manager because you know the manager or set up certain things for a vehicle because you know the, the bus company and they know you. So a lot of these things may seem simple. And I even tell people that's looking to get in the same business because I'm one of the people that encourage the business of getting people to Africa because the reality of it is it's the future one way or another. And it's one of the only places that we can literally just come together as a people and build something without having a bunch of things that's going to stop us from building or people who want to destroy what you're building and things like that. Uh, so, you know, it's just trying to let everyone know that, you know, these things can be done and we have people out there that's doing it for you and people out there that are available. So you can either connect into them or you can connect with uh, you and a few other people, put things together and make it work. But either or, you know, it's, uh, we're just showing you the doable. And just like when we show people houses going up and people living, these are the things that's going on in Africa and, Anyone can be, you know, can can do it. It's, it's, you know, we're not, we don't have any superpowers or anything. But you know, there's, uh, you just have to be open to taking direction and advice from people who know what they're doing and things like that. So sometimes you open up people, you know, telling people like, don't judge me by how crazy my hair might look. I actually know what I'm doing and well experienced. And and that's what I was telling some, of our, um, you know, some of our brothers down the street earlier today that. You know, it's like you never know who may be down to do anything in Africa. It could be, you know, someone that's on the street corners or it could be one of those people we call bougie and things like that. So, you know, you make yourself available to this 
equally just talk to people, talk to your brothers and sisters, and let them know that, hey, no matter where you come from, what your background or whatever, let's talk. I even had someone who was talking to me about a felon. I was like, you know, let me just make sure I explain this to you that way you don't think just because you have something on your record, you can't go to Africa. Because that's not even true. You know, that's, you know, like a felony doesn't stop you from getting a passport. You know, and, and this was, you know, this was a good, a good brother, you know, not going to say anything that the person get into, but he's telling people that, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just like you. I'm a brother from uh, like you just doing business. I'm, I sell tours. I sell land. I sell computer services. Put up your camera person. Consultation business, you know, help you just to, to help you or talk with you in an open conversation. And I just want people to understand that, you know, we're all people that, you know, that we're real just like you. And we're building a movement more of like a people's movement where it's not a bunch of hierarchy of people with all these titles and stuff like that. That's, you know, you know, if you run the business, you know, the, the business title is what it is. But, you know, besides all of that, we're good brothers that want to get you connected because we realize what we need to do, which is corporate economics. If more of us show that interest in Africa, we can make these moves. I agree with you 100%. Um, and I, I can concur pretty much everything you said. Um, I've seen, because, you know, uh, now that I'm fully immersed into the into the going back to Africa movement, um, <clears throat> I see a lot of people kind of just decide, okay, America is pretty much just becoming unbearable. And they can feel that um, wicked or evil entities is basically running rampant on the earth, especially in the West. And so they feel that and they decide, okay, I want to get up out of here, right? And a lot of folks are just booking a, a flight and just picking a country and just going over with no plan. So can you speak to that? And would you advise people doing that? Or would you would you advise kind of like what I always advise, that people take tours to understand the country, to lean on the networking system that we have set up. And that way you have some people to help you uh, uh, with your transition to the country. So what would you recommend for folks that's just wanting to get out of America and uh, go to back to the motherland? Uh, yes, it's a two uh, situation. Definitely a, a, a tour. A tour literally just open you up to everything that you need to know to move forward. Uh, but if people are not willing to just do that because they want to save that money and do something else and make a certain move, then you pay for consultation, but you have to pay for something. Uh, so consultation will get you all the things that you need set up, have your folks waiting for you at the airport to get you to your apartment, to get you connected to the lawyer or the person immigration is going to do all your legal paperwork to get you to see your land and all those things. So that's what consultation can get you or the tour. You're going to physically see everything with a group of people and you're able to just enjoy your time also. So those are things I literally do recommend. Uh, anything else I tell people, um, Move, uh, make your move to Africa at your own risk because um, trying to say it in a way that's not just speaking negative to about anyone, but the reality of it is whether you're in Ghana, Jamaica, Nigeria, uh, if you just strap up and just go to any of them places and you just think you're just going to move into any neighborhood uh, and you think everything is just going to be everything, it's just not that simple. You know, number one, um, people who are in that area know where you're from and especially if, you know, you move in a certain area, not you know. You can even move in the fanciest areas, and if it's just dominated by certain people that don't know who you are, people are gonna you know, and you may make a move. People are gonna watch you, especially if you live out further, saying that you're gonna get some land further away and just build what you want to build, and think it's just that simple. You're dealing with human nature, you're dealing with reality, you're dealing with uh, people who are gonna look at you as who they're gonna look at you, and there's not nothing you can do to change the situation. Uh, whether it's a movie they saw, a video they saw, or they just know that. You're someone that's moving there and you got a whole lot more than what they have. And then they know that you're going to be leaving and go back to where you come from anytime soon. And even if you get someone locally there to do certain things, they know what they can talk that person into and things like that. Not saying that these things happen all the time, but there's a bunch of reality of many situations that I don't ever want to just put out there to tell people and situations like that. And that's why we have done what we have done. Got land as a community and have a real estate office there with two people from America that uh, that are running the office. And, um, and you know, we have a few people from Ghana there also moving around and the builders and things like that. So you have a whole network of people that's 
the the eye out and they, they you know you're and you you work with everybody where you're connected to it. and so from getting attorneys to consultants and things like that there's a bunch of things that people are gonna have to just look at if they're looking to make that individual move and go by themselves you know now you're dealing with land so are you gonna skip the cost of paying the lawyer which is a ridiculous amount of money because lawyers are expensive everywhere i've never been anywhere or hear about attorneys and they they say that these attorneys go for a good deal like it's just not the reality of that life so but at the same time too that's your best access to doing anything for your legal and being a legal representation of courts and to make sure documents are fine and make sure that they negotiate and things like that and i've been able to just gain that experience and i realize a hundred percent why a lot of people who go to ghana have issues with their land and problems because i even have people thinking that they can accuse us of land craziness but i'm telling people do your best and do your research we covered ourselves to the highest level it's it's something because you know but people are not willing to do what you you know you go above and beyond like i was telling one person that you know we literally had i, had, I hired another attorney to, to make him tell the chief to go to the, the to, to verify all the documents with the police station and i also tell him to go to the lands commission again which you know these are things that you do but you're showing people that you have to be willing to go that level to make sure everything that you're dealing with is legit even if you have to go through 10 different things and that's so and most people are not willing to do those things and but when you have an energy of a group of people you can put your money together and you can keep an attorney on staff you can keep consultants you can keep other people uh so that's why we, we're telling people if you connect with us that's like we have where we rented our business office for black star in that whole um community they have homes there so if somebody needs to get a temporary house i tell them they get you you can get your three bedroom two bathroom house for two thousand dollars for the whole year that's your rental and then you can get land across the street with us and you can literally spend that whole year building your house you can go over there every day and you can see what's going on with your house plus you know everybody we have agreement with so you're telling people that like, these things can be worked out but someone has to be willing to take the groundwork and if more and more of us do tourism and, and come into the country and be willing to do the work for the rest of us, we're good to go. Because we need definitely more than a few of us doing all of these things. And the only thing you tell people to think about strength in numbers, thinking about this covering all your bases because people are gonna try you and things like that. And you know, I'm someone that you know, especially if you, you know, you don't look like you are, you know, it's like that's one thing about being a, a person from the street and your business person it's like it make the world of a difference versus your business person that come from somewhere else because people don't really people won't try you once you you need because you already know the tricks of the trade already <laughs> that's number one because you're dealing with other black folks from where you come from so not saying that everybody in Ghana is from the streets but it's like you deal with that kind of mentality like somebody trying to pull a slick one on you but they can't pull it on you because you already know that situation so you're telling people even when you're trying to you have to have a whole lot of background and it's not like everyone is ready to do this kind of life and that's the thing you're trying to mention to everyone that unless so the best thing to do is join with a group of people to make it work other than that you go to ghana you just go get ghana whatever country and you spend six thousand dollars on rent and then you have this vision of building a business so and then you, you have a vision of doing so many things but all, all you know is that a year later or two years later that never worked out and all you know is your bank account is empty and all you know is the one place you can go is go to American Embassy and say, yo, get me out of here. I'm done on my luck. And they, you know, they're going to get you out of there and things like that because it's just one of those situations. And I've seen people literally just go through that. But I'm telling people that we don't have to do that. But let's drop our pride and let's put our energy together, our money together. And, you know, let put the people to work that can do the job. And then so those are things that, you know, you just literally the brother that's always mentioning to people about this opening the energy and building trust but and at the same time too for those who feel like they need to gain more trust i tell them they can come right here to this house or we can meet somewhere or we can talk whatever you want to do we can do video calls or you know whatever else you, see, you know everything is public and available but you tell people that we're serious about this because it was like if we don't make these moves by the time you turn around the lebanese in whatever country cut in every country that i talk about and the indians or just any other groups they can easily say you know what we're going to do they, they say we're just going to step our game up you know it's you know we got the money why not just buy up all the land in the country I'm not saying that's going to happen. Well, hope, I'm hoping that it'll happen. <laughs> but it's like, what if that does happen? You know, you're telling people like, now you got to go to other people. Just like, you know, we have to go. Every time we go to a real estate place, it's not really owned by us. And we just, it's a group of white folks put their money together and bought the land 
and they build real estate. So it's like, do you want to deal with the same thing in Africa? And that's all. I just feel like Africa is perfect because we have been abused and we have been just lost all kind of opportunities by being this slow and behind or being this targeted or being this victimized or being this worked in the system where you're not allowed to do this. And uh, whichever means, it's just all different ways. Now we have a situation where I don't know what can really stop us other than ourselves, but we have the whole continent wide open. I just can't find enough people to, to, to just connect to the continent. But I'm telling everyone, if you're looking to this getaway and you're looking to do the work and work together with your own people, Africa is the future for you. But if you just want everything to be done for you and controlled by other people, stay in America. It's just a perfect life for those who make a lot of money and just want everybody to do everything else for them. Um, and just good luck on what people decide to do with you uh, when things change. Uh, you know, you can go from just being a rich person to just another black person and you just, you know, whatever situation, there's no, there's no, and then people may say that nothing is guaranteed in Africa, but the same thing what we're saying is that the goal is to build relationship to the highest level to where now we're part of the future of Africa. And I don't know if we can ever like build anything in America where we can comfortably feel like we're part of this country. Like, I don't know if it's possible. I'm not like doubting it and I'm not here to knock people who just, that's their future. But one thing I can tell you for sure, I've seen Africa change from my 18 years of traveling there and a lot more could have worked out, but enough of us wasn't participating. But now that we have this momentum going, you know, just all it takes is more of us and we're good. Hey, well said, well said. And I agree 100% because I would not recommend for folks to just up and lead either, especially if it's a nation where no real uh, network has been set up. So because what I see folks doing, and you know, I get a lot of calls and a lot of emails from folks, and I try to help out best I can. But at some point, people got their mind made up, uh, even contrary to what we're saying. We believe that it's, a best, it's best for people to book a tour, shell out the money. To me, it's like doing, it's like doing research. But somebody has figured out everything already. So all you're doing is just putting down your, your funds, and, and we're going to advise you and instruct you on what to do in order to qualify, right? We bring you over. We got safe passage. We got your luggage. Uh, under control. We got the bus. We got the food. We got the the hotels. We got all the excursions. We got all the ho- the uh, museums. We got all the water uh, islands and the beaches. We have everything mapped out for you. I mean, that took literally <laughs> I don't know how many man hours went into just figuring all that out to where it's, it, it runs pretty smooth. And all you have to do is just plop your money down and let's go. And then from there, you will be able to see the opportunities with your own eyes. Nobody's going to have to tell you anything. Yeah. You're going to see the country. You're going to see the conditions. You're going to see what improvements can can uh, uh, change the country for the better. Right. And you don't have to sit back and try to figure all this stuff out on your own. But what I'm seeing a lot of folks are doing is just foregoing all that. And just saying, okay, I'm ready to get out of America. I'm, I'm, I don't like what I see here, and I want somewhere else to go. And somehow they, then stumbled onto some of our videos, right? And just decide, hey, look, I like this country. I like what they're saying. I like some of the pictures. I like some of the nightlife I saw. I like some of the, the food, uh, the dances, or whatever it was that attracted them to that particular country. And they just packing all their stuff up and just going over there. Don't know the neighborhood, don't know the, the language, uh, don't know if they're in a good area, a bad area. Uh, they don't know about the restaurants, the quality of the restaurants. They don't know the, the particular people in that area. They really have no guide to show them around. Um, to me, that's a recipe for disaster. Now, if you got a lot of money, then you, you probably can stand a few losses. Right, you could take a couple of hits, a couple of bumps, a couple of bruises, and then that give you enough room to figure out, okay, who's a good person, who wants to see you do well or whatever, and then you could probably, you know, do all right. But for folks who don't have a lot of money, these tours is a small investment into your research, and then from there, 
you can determine if this is a great move for you. Do you want to be a part of a community? Do you want to contribute? How you can contribute? You'll be able to see if you got like uh, skills in education, manufacturing, uh, engineering, uh, logistics, whatever skill you have, whatever uh, uh, degree you have, you can, when we go on these tours, you're going to be able to see things and we're going to visit places where you can see that you can implement this particular skill. So, and we make sure you got a safe passage. We have, we have people to make sure that we have safe patches, passage wherever we're going. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, you have people to watch out for you, right? If you decide you want to go somewhere, we either send somebody with you, right? Or we'll make sure you get a, a cab over there. The cab will wait for you. You do your business. You come back in that cab, and somebody will be checking on you the whole time. To me, I have not had no bad experiences going to Africa. I think I've been there now, what, 10 <laughs> times? maybe 11. I've not had no bad experience and I've been all over. I, sometimes I move away from the tour and either I tell Bo Money, hey, look, man, I want to go to the mall. And he'd be like, all right, cool. What you trying to do? I'm like, I, I need a phone cord. I want a case. Plus, I just want to look around in case I see something I want to buy. He's like, all right, cool. Let me go down there and hook up a, hook up a, a cab and the cab guy going to wait for you, right? You go in there, do your business, come back out, jump in the cab, come back. And it, do, while I'm there, he may send me a message. Hey, man, you all right? Yeah, I'm good. To me, it's invaluable to have that type of structure as opposed to me just get off the couch because I'm inspired by all these videos and just end up in Africa and had to figure all that out on my own. Man, I, I can't see it. <laughs> I, just, I just can't see it. You know what I mean? So I appreciate the brother. And, and all of that extra stuff that you don't really even think about, he already has an idea about it. He already has a game plan. And all you got to do is just go to him and say, hey, I'm trying to do this. Or I would like to do this. I would like to go to a school. I'd like to go to an orphanage. You know, I'd like to go out to, to a, to a uh, nightlife somewhere. I want to go to the mall. I want to go down to the market. I saw we passed by a big market. I want to go there. I saw something I like. I want to go get a tailor. I want some stuff made. I want some beads made. I want some carvings. So can you can you elaborate on all of the shopping and the things if you want to take care of like going to a school or, or going to the mall or, or going to a market? You want to just kind of give them a synopsis on how you handle it so people can be confident if they book a tour with you, how that, how that thing or how those things would, would happen. Oh, perfect. The main thing about um, any tour that you do, I always tell people that uh, the focus is the itinerary. That's what you're going to be doing. Uh, so what you want to do is you write everything in the itinerary. Example, um, like for us in Ghana, it's simple. You, you're close to the, the Accra Mall and the Kamasi Mall when you're driving around in those days. So you can always you know, drop people off after the tour. You can after the uh, tour day and things like that and work it in the schedule. So that way, you know, people see, I mean, it's, it you know, depends on how people look at it, but it's it's important to see something like a mall and a university. Cause like literally people ask me those questions. Do they have any malls in Africa? Do they have any university? Do they have bathrooms? All kind of stuff. And you know, I'm not mad at them because it's, you know, it's these, these are the ignorance that's been put out there and things like that. But we are in a modern day time. So you you expect people to like look on YouTube and look things up, but nevertheless, uh, you know, we are to explain and be honest, explain. I could even do a better one. Trust me and let me show you. Uh, so you work that in that itinerary. So I don't think there's anything that we don't cover in the itinerary. And if we're somewhere where you have a beach, like, you know, like Zanzibar Island, we spend some time there. We, if you're in South Africa, Tanzania, you know, you have animals, you have national parks. So let people see those things. Uh, always drumming and dancing. That's the best thing in Africa uh, as far as just roots and culture. Because that takes you back to... You know, when you think about the, the, everything that they're using to perform, you see that in your modern day world, you know, when you see it on, on you know, on what used to be MTV or now just music TVs all over or YouTube, and you're seeing all of the instruments and everything. And you see, so when you go to a circle a museum and places like that, or you just see the drum and dancing, you're looking at organic instruments 
So, you know, even that tells you that we're the foundation and we're the creators of civilization and culture. You know what I mean? Because all those things, I got ridiculous amount of music that shows it to like further than when, you know, when you look at a time like that, you're like, white folks are around. And I was like, yeah, exactly. I was like, this is, you know, our, our, our people created civilization. So that's another thing that people are going to be able to uh, experience this uh, moving around uh, literally like we went to South Africa and went to Tanzania and as you can see each itinerary is different but the one thing that they cover all together is like if we were in an area and they had museums we went to those museums like you went to Tanzania like we had went to a few four different museums and those four museums were what was in the path of our traveling and things like that and the same thing in South Africa and other countries uh, so and then naturally, you know, you have the, those certain markets that you always just go to where it's an open air market and people can do their shopping and you, know, you, you cover those things. And I'm telling you, family, literally, it creates a situation where you can enjoy the best of the country within 10 days and it covers all aspects of things. And I mean, I mentioned to you, like, when we talk about investment, we're talking about an investment conference. Uh, which which I've had one in Senegal and I have a, this nonstop one from 2006 to up to last uh, early uh, January, uh, sorry last uh, December in Ghana to where you literally just cover uh, those things. So um, and then you know so with our itineraries, it literally just cover roots, culture, business, investment, nightlife, shopping, networking based on the flow of the itinerary. And then also when you talk about nightlife. Uh, we can always organize something where we go to something culturally or we can just go to a regular nightclub or a social gathering or we can just do different things different days uh, the only thing i'll tell people is that keep your energy up if you want to experience all of it yeah i agree because i i have uh participated in the nightlife <laughs> and uh the shopping you know i like to shop uh i'm more of a maybe guy that like to definitely get uh, outfits tailored made for me. So pretty much every country we go to, I, I always connect with the tailors and get some fabric and, and have me something made in that particular country from uh, the fabrics that they produce. Because what I've noticed is um, a lot of those fabrics are breathable. Uh, they keep you cool. They're light. And then what I also notice when it comes time for me to pack, if I pack those particular items, then it, it actually condenses down where my luggage is a lot lighter. Because my first few trips, like Bomani said at first, you know, I literally would pack everything under the sun. So when I got to the hotel, when I got to the airport, they was like, "Yeah, you gonna have to pay for this bag," <laughs> even though the bags were included in the trip. They, they charged me throughout, the, and most of that stuff I didn't even use. So. It's good that we've been able to, to go on these trips and now kind of narrow it down to what I need to take. Uh, it's usually pretty hot, so you want to take a lot of clothes that's light. If you got any linen, uh, short sets or something like that, uh, light colored clothing, sandals, gym shoes, uh, comfortable walking shoes, because um, you don't need to really pack a whole lot of clothes. Now, maybe it, some stuff for nightlife, something kind of dressy, um, definitely some things white if we're doing naming ceremonies. Most naming ceremonies are, most folks, their attire is white. Uh, you need some frog shoes because we're going to be getting in and out of boats. We're going to be getting in and out of water. Um, and most tours, you're going to do some walking. So for folks who don't get a lot of exercise, you sit around a lot, uh, you, you like to you might want to like before your trip get your gym membership at uh one of these places where you're paying ten dollars or whatever and go get on the treadmill you know so you can uh acclimate your body so you can be uh, involved in all the activities because these tours are intense they are very intense so i would advise people to do this but now but money may have a different opinion so i'm not sure so we'll turn over him and let him speak to um the 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 way the tours are structured and so much is put into the tour and the stamina that you really need in order to enjoy yourself on these tours uh yes uh and that's one of those things where we have something called building your immune system but beyond that you know it's um 
you know, you're asking someone how much of, you know, you want to really enjoy, but uh, you, you do have to be in somewhat shape, you know, like we do canopy walks and things like that. And sometimes, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're warning people, you're like you tell them you're climbing up in, you know, in elevation and you're crossing canopies and doing certain things as, as a physical activity. And even the people who try to make it, sometimes you look up and you're like, where's the rest of the folks? And they'll turn back. Um, and, you know, and that's because you're not used to moving and being active. Like you, some people, like my car is as close to a house as I think you can get. But then some people have garages where as soon as they drive up into the garage, as soon as they walk out the door to walk into the kitchen is right there. Now, you haven't walked anywhere at all. Um, and, and then you pull up to Walmart and you're just waiting for the closest park, parking spot and you park in there. There's no exercise. And then you already know, every, you know, it's like we're just getting limited exercise, but people have to make it there an idea in their mind, even if they have to park far is my point, or if they have to just get used to just start walking, 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 but the walking will definitely help. Uh, as far as you mentioned about gym membership, that's perfect. Uh, because I've seen so much people drained and I'm like, and so you ask yourself, why are you not tired? But you know, some people like say, you just got natural energy like that. But at the same time too, you know, it's, I'm, you know, very active and you know, I also have a light, light uh, diet, you know, the things that, the kind of things that you eat and you stuff your body with and just slow you down to where you just, once you finish eating, you're ready to go to sleep. Uh, so you just tell people just to cut back on this, the, the heavy stuff and just you know, put more organic things in your body and just be more active. And that would just ultimately help you move around and be ready. Exactly. Because I know that first trip where I was, I figured I, to myself, I'm thinking like, okay, I'm in pretty good shape. I ain't gonna lie, I was whooped. <laughs> I mean, you, I ain't gonna lie because I'm thinking like, okay, I'm in good shape. I don't need to worry about walking. I'm, I work out. You know what I'm saying? I, I get on the treadmill every now and then. I hit the weights or whatever. And so, man, that first trip we went, I ain't gonna lie about the sixth day. I was like, Lord have mercy. I want to sit the next day out. I want to just sleep. You know what I mean? Even yeah. though we get a day or so. Well, we could just relax and uh, chill at the hotel if we want, go to the beach if we want, go shopping if we want. So we do get a like a a all purpose day that you kind of put in the schedule to make sure that people just kind of do whatever they want to do that day. You know, maybe they want to shop it. Maybe they want to hit a beach that we didn't hit that was on the tour. Maybe they met somebody that they want to have lunch with or brunch with or whatever, and they want to go. So you do leave room. For at least one day where people just kind of do their own thing um and then we go to a lot of uh the craftsmen we go to a lot of the artists uh we see a lot of the brothers and sisters that really take uh pride in doing things with their hand uh, hand craftsmanship so do you want to talk to the people a little bit about some of the souvenirs and some of the, the artwork some of the carvings uh, some of the leather works, some of the uh, purses, belts, outfits, tailors. You want to talk to some of the people about those type of things that you have set up that's, that you'll see on your tools? Uh, yes, for the most part, um, I would say that uh, every African country you go to, you're going to have those craft markets uh, or culture centers, uh, and specifically on the ones uh, that's in Ghana, um, the art center in Accra and the one in Kumasi, ideal places, um, get all of your, the crafts that's created in the country and this, you get them for reasonable prices. When we go to the Ashanti Palace Museum, that's another place to shop. And you just, you just recommend that, you know, people bring as much spending money and redecorate your life with the roots and culture, uh, because that's one thing you're going to, you know, and then, you know, in situations like we're in Ghana, they see if we have a bus of people come, you know, the next thing you know, you have you have you know you have vendors right there available. Same thing in Kumasi, that's ready to you know, or there in Elmina, wherever we go. So we just have to be prepared to this, you know, engage in your shopping. And remember, the most important thing is that you negotiate. If you have stress or issues in negotiation, I usually have a few brothers uh, with me that are traveling that can uh, negotiate for you and be clear with you on literally on how to this you know make things uh, work with the, the prices and things and get the best price. <laughs> Somebody said it was in the Navy with me. Uh, that's that's hilarious. Yeah, they say you look familiar. That's, that's what I say. You look familiar. Great memory because 
that was a long time ago that was like nah, that's so long that's like that's like a quarter cent that's a quarter century ago that's like 25 years ago <laughs> exactly I've been, right i've been i've been retired as you know retired in and all that stuff but then yeah it was um so i was in like 1996 to 2000 but uh yeah maybe familiar um but uh but yes family i'm trying to get i'm trying to like make a move man you know we, i'm telling people we're always elevating like people see you do like we don't want like one minute people see someone they're like you still working the airlines i was like nah man i've been i've been moved forward man we didn't you know Are you still doing this i was like nah it's just we just we're just moving forward you still doing your business absolutely that's the grassroots of everything i keep the business flowing that's the only way to employ your children good luck on somebody that's employing them <laughs> absolutely because that's what i'm i'm liking uh when i see the, the craftsmen when I go there, it's just a marvel. You guys probably have right. no idea to be able to go to these places and see a person take a big block of wood and produce these type of pieces. It's like, it's amazing. They don't have, uh, and a lot of them haven't went to school. It's just natural talent. Natural yeah, talent. Or you can see, round up. Exactly. Or, or you see uh, a lot of them doing their paintings. Uh, they put different beads together, different necklaces. I mean, it's just a, the gamut. That's why I say when you pack for a tour, you want to make sure that you you keep some room so you can buy all these stuff that you're going to buy and be able to put into your suitcase and not have to pay an arm and a leg on the way back to get through the airport because, you know, your luggage is way, I think it's like, what is it, about money, 50 pounds or something? Yes, uh, you get two 50-pound uh, check bags. And that's for most airlines dealing with international, unless you specifically buy a package for one bag, which you can you can do that option. But all the, all the ones that we have ever done and that I still do today, uh, those it's that, that's what you have. So you have fifty pounds, fifty pounds to work with. So the recommendation is always uh, use one bag to bring things that you're going to get rid of that you're just not bringing back at all. So those things are going to be school supplies. Um, and donations, and they're also going to be things that you may want to barter with, you know, jeans, uh, sneakers. Uh, you may have certain things that you just literally want to get rid of because they don't fit you or you just had it and you just never wore it or whatever the situation was. You know, think about that option. And trust me, people, every time I wear some some kind of sneakers, somebody's always trying to negotiate with me. I'm like, yo, I'm not going to give you my sneakers, yo. <laughs> I was like, what is this, some jail out stuff? <laughs> I was like, you just... Exactly. <laughs> it's like, like, like where you from? You know, you don't walk up to people normally in the open world and just come up to them like that and, and ask them for for things like that. You know, that's something where you, you're in a different life. So, it, it's just, it's people want to trade with things because people see with things on. They're like, okay, I like that. Now let me trade with you. And you know, and realistically, if you, like the shirt you have on, if you can get another one when you get back to America, why not trade it? Why not you know bargain and negotiate and why not you know sometimes Ooh. that. Happens. Uh, technology stuff and I have you know my staff members I was like no it's all good I'll get I'll get another one not saying that we just got it like that but it's like you know it's people are gonna want to do you know things because there's certain things like America's I would consider like the privileged world where I think when China ships stuff they ship the better stuff here I think so right maybe I'm, uh, yeah. I'm gonna, and they ship the worst stuff and everybody ship the worst stuff to Africa yeah, I think do. that's how it work and and things like that so and you know you literally you know like you, you tell people so i would rather you know so i would literally trade my tanzania jersey with you uh you know for your shirt or and things like that and i think it's just perfectly just normal but some people may not be open to that or used to that so we tell them that it's literally normal enjoy your trade get rid of those things and now you have 50 pounds so now you get all your craft and you fill it up and then now you're good to go and if you accumulate more things then you can pay an extra 200 dollars for an extra 50 pound bag. And if you have more stuff to bring from the other end, then you could just you know, do the same. Exactly, because I have seen a situation where <clears throat> people bought so much stuff that we they had to get another uh, suitcase, which they just basically let you know, hey, look, man, I bought so much stuff, I need to get another suitcase. So you, def you definitely uh, accommodated them so they can pack that third suitcase and they just had to pay you know, they just had to bite the bullet and pay that extra money in order to bring that extra case. But but my thing is, if you pack lightly on the front end, then it gives you more uh, leeway on your 50 pounds or your, or your two 50 pound limits. So you can put more stuff in your stuff to bring back, because every time I go, I always buy stuff, even if 
you know, uh, uh, I don't tend to give it away. I end up giving it away to folks. And a lot of stuff I keep, you know what I mean, for myself because it, I just kind of switch it up. I don't wear the same thing all the time, so I switch it up. But definitely be prepared to shop because, man, the bargains that you can negotiate is just off off the scales you know i love it i love negotiating because that's just a, like a chicago thing that we do we just go everywhere we go we just barter just for the hell of it you know what i mean because you never know where a person's bottom is you know you might be thinking like oh yeah they told me this much and you st- the, the, the rule of thumb i'm gonna give y'all a a, a, a a gym the rule of thumb is whatever the price they say start out a half of that <laughs> beautiful great advice and, <laughs> start out with half of that and then maybe you can work your way up to a to a a, a negotiate a, a meeting of the minds where you can they can make a little money and then you can get a great deal and when he said when he when he talked about barter i do that a lot as well like i remember one time we went to ghana and i had uh some high top air force ones they was green like the army color green and people just kept saying man i like your style i like your style i like your style right i'm like I appreciate that. I appreciate that. You know, and I would always uh, extend the same comp- compliments. I like your style as well. You know, so one guy was like, "Hey, man, what size them shoes is?" So I was like, hey, girl, "I'm telling you, man. no." <laughs> like, I'm like, you know, Chicago. When you hear that, like, "Hey, man, what size you wear?" That's that's fighting words. What, what, what you gonna take it from me or something? And that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, like, where I'm from, you don't you don't come to you don't say those things unless exactly. you're trying to somebody's stuff like. You. <laughs> you talk about what size I wear. What you mean? So, but with the brother, it was a young brother. You know, he didn't really have shoes like that. And I was like, you know what? I can always get me another pair of uh, Air Force One. So I said, bro, what size you wear? He said, man, I wear eleven and a half. Guess what size I wear? Eleven and a half. I said, man, they'll fit just right. So I took them off my foot right then, gave them to the brother, and uh, he said, man, somebody else walked by and saw me giving it to him, and that that knew him. And said, "Man, you're gonna be the only one in the country with a pair of Air Force Ones like that." And just the, the pride that that just washed over him when that somebody else said that, that made me feel good. That made me feel good. So yeah, if you guys go on trips, bring stuff that you can't wear. To you, you may think, "Oh, that's old. It's out of date. It's old fashioned." But to to for folks and brothers and sisters on uh, on the continent. To them, they never seen that type of stuff because, like Bo Money said, most of the world when they send goods to Africa, they usually send a defective, outdated, and yeah, old not, uh, uh, that's stuff that's not really manufactured. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, it's tearing up, ripping, and thread is hanging, all kind of stuff. So, things that we take for granted to them, it's like, man, it's a treasure. So, bring your old things and uh, make somebody's day. You know. And before we get out of here, um, let's talk about the the schools, the school supplies that you mentioned earlier, and and some of the uh, what we call sakat in uh, Islam, some of the charity that we try to uh, extend while we're there. So, we want to speak a little bit about the charity that we try to do there. Oh yes, absolutely. Um, you know, as um, you know, as an adult, uh, you know, you, you know, the the, the most important thing. Um, you know, is that you know you, you try to just leave a path to let the children know that you know you you know you care about the future and that you know you're willing to just invest in the future by all means. Uh, so from the future aspirations of our business and community center to this the regular school supplies and donations, including clothes, financial donations, and things like that that you organize together with your group members, and then you may go to you know one, two, or three schools and you just share the love, and uh, you know this. Uh, uh, an organic thing that's a part of a program uh so you, you know you're not just in a country just enjoying yourself you know you're also looking at the social situation that um a lot of children just don't have there's no school fees to pay for them there's no clothing there's no shoes there's no basic things like you know like you know you look at pens and just pencils things that you know we just throw away or you have a child he may not even be interested in these things and this, these are the things we take for granted that some people just literally do not have. Um, basic toys, uh, you know, I'm not into the holiday, but, you know, regardless, you know, you know, we live in a historical world where people celebrate, you know, Christmas, they celebrate other holidays, and children want, <laughs> you know, what it is, uh, 
they you know, they want gifts. Like my son, my son is slick. Like you know, like I don't think he's even into any holiday, but any chance he, he look at things as oh that's that's a time frame when I can get me a gift, birthdays, holidays, or whatever. And I think it's just a natural thing for a child. You know, they're just open to certain things, but some places it's just it's just that world doesn't exist like that. You know, unless a group of white missionaries come and give white dolls and things like that, which we you know we can't accept. So we you know we have to be the ones to. To, to like, I've taken some white dolls out of one place and said, you know, they're, they're like family, this is not going to educate our children. And then they're replaced with black dolls, and that's you know, you just do your best to bring whatever you can bring and share. And they just encourage people to mail you stuff or just do the same. Um, and it's just, it's, it's like, it's a foundation to start, and um, it makes a lot, big difference. And I think one time I was able to, we was able to raise like a thousand dollars at one school slash orphanage, and. They use that money and then you know, next thing you know the buildings start going up. Uh so every little help, yeah. um, you know. So the, the best thing about all the tours that we do, all of our brothers and sisters gotta look at one thing out there that's in common. Everything that we're talking about is black owned operation. You know, the schools we go to, the hotels, the places we eat, the people we're dealing with, all black folks. So we're reinvesting our money with our own people. We're not we're not just collecting money from black folks. Um and just spending it all and giving it back into the system. We're literally relocating our money to Africa. I've had a few accounts closed because they're like, why are you sending so much money to Africa? I was like, we have business there. And so they, they probably wonder like, why don't you spend some of this money here? I was like, you spend enough here the, 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 as much as you need to. Uh, but that's one of the beautiful things about it. And I hope people can just really just give us respect and love for that because there's some people out there like literally they'll just take all your money and put you on everything white. It's hard to really work your way around the airlines. Um, I've been able to work it uh, if you're using Ethiopian and some other airlines, but you're limited on that. So I can't say that about anybody. But when you go into any country, one of the things is you have foreign hotels and you also have international local hotels, and you have your choice. And you, you know, I've, we've been able to do it. And majority, of the, well, I can't say majority of them because. But yeah, majority of the hotels that, you know, my brother, when we traveled is, you know, owned by, is are black owned. And, you know, you're telling people that when you invest in black owned business, we're trying to set an example that you don't just, you take the money and reinvest it back in us. And so from the school supplies to everything that you're doing, you're reinvesting it back in the country and you're building a future. And I tell people, if you decide to just go to whatever African country and everything that you're going to spend money, you're going to go to the Chinese restaurant, the Indian restaurant, sorry, excuse me, or even just break it down like this, the, 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 the Lebanese restaurant, the Indian hotel, and you're going to go to um, everything else that, that everybody else owns. It's just not a real connection. So all the, all the tours we have is just literally just organic on a black experience and literally give you a close connection where your people are going to respect and show you love. So, you know, so family, show some love all and you know we'll make it work because you know it's you know the public relations and all those things are you know, very important because there's a big misconception of us as a people some people may you know because everywhere you go in the world you know i mean i can think of all of the movies that have came out with this all black cast some very positive some very negative and violent and and just tell a certain story about maybe a very small percentage of, of people so I think internationally, when we live in the world, for those of us who live in America, you go places, people never really, I don't think people know, you know, certain things. But one thing I think people look at is the fact people think we got money. Because I'll be the first one to tell people, like, there's no bank over here. Like, the bank, what's in the bank goes to us as a people in business. But, um, you know, it's up to us, honestly, and not telling anybody, for us to just tell our side of the story and show people what we're about as a people. And if we just come to Africa all the time and even something basic has been some school supplies and going to a school and say what's up to the children and see what's going on with them. And even, and if we, you know, and if we can't do that, it's like, and I know some people don't do those things. And I'm not knocking those or anybody who don't do those things. It's just, I just believe in order for us, I can't get myself involved in anything unless we just, kind of covering our bases and building a future to where we're letting the, the, a young generation understand that the world is theirs and our goal is to create opportunities for them so they can create opportunities for the next generation and keep it going, keep it going until we take back over the world and or, or to where we can basically, you know, basically 
I don't know. Uh, I don't know what's a comfortable terminology, and you know, not to say take back over the world, but we were once rulers of the world where we were highly respected people and things like that. And um, I don't know how that feels because I wasn't around in that type of the world. All I know is about the oppression that we have dealt with, and just wanted us to make things better for our generation. And I look at um, I look at the Asian, uh, whether it's like Indians, Chinese, or the Koreans, as certain standards of this. And not saying that there's nobody else that was oppresses us, but not saying that it was even in similar situations, but they were, you know, they were oppressed people colonized by other nations and things like that. And uh, they just did a different format of things. I think they were more focused on uniting themselves and industrializing and maybe off about one or two things and maybe missing one or two things. Uh, but I think those are the things that we never really have done. You know, we just basically had 50 something different countries and then you go across the Caribbean, there's a bunch more other countries and things like that. So. I feel organically building these relationships and taking it there where, you know, you're dealing with from connected with children to land, to business investment, to network into this, reaching out to your people. I feel like we can just take it to another level and build a, you know, a new future in Africa for, for, you know, for us and our future. I agree. I agree. Well, we don't want to keep our money too long. So you guys, no. if you have a couple of questions, <laughs> because the brother, <laughs> because the brother um, he has a tour coming up, and uh, so I was able to snag him away from uh, his busy schedule. So if you guys got a couple questions that he can answer, and then uh, we'll let him get out of here, and then I'll bring up my two other folks down as waiting patiently, and then we can continue the conversation. So if you got any questions, uh, put them in the chat right quick, and the brother can answer them. And if you don't have no questions, then we'll go ahead and let the money get back to uh setting up his tour which is coming up soon so you want to give him the dates again brother oh uh, yes um our Ghana tour starts uh may 24th and then we return june 5th this uh tour dates and uh anyone that want to check out any of our details just to keep it simple uh they can visit our website africa for the africans.org and i am looking for one of my magical postcard flyers that's always here and these are the digital, let me work it. Yeah, there you go. And now uh, that's our website. And once you're on the website, lots of tour information and lots of social links for photos and videos. And uh, the journey of a lifetime continues. Uh, so if anyone want to reach out to me directly, um, they can uh, text or call me at 404-931-9429 in the state of Georgia. All right, so family. Put it in the chat right, put in the chat right quick, Bob Money. Uh, all of the uh, contact details. Yeah, just, just, uh, just show your, your email and your phone number. That way they can, call, they can contact you and just kind of let you know that they saw you over here on my channel. And then uh, you can communicate with them that way. So something quick. Email is good and then phone number is good. Absolutely, uh, and that is. Well, I don't see no questions, so maybe we did. I did a good job answering a lot of the questions that people probably wouldn't even think to answer. But since I've been on uh, plenty of tours, I kind of know um, what somebody, what we call a greenhorn, some of the things that they would probably just kind of gloss over and not think to ask. So maybe I did a good job of answering you some, some uh, questions that normally just kind of go by the wayside people just figure out when they get on the tour but i think we covered a lot of things yes uh best to just go over as much as possible all the time and because i told people i was like you know i don't mind doing certain things but you know once i'm in africa and i mean I'm, all i can remember is that i was working seven days a week for many weeks and then now i'm in africa i'm enjoying it so exactly doing <laughs> and let's not like you know sit down there and just like you know like none of us have anything better to do and just talk about things that we don't we need to talk about like i can't remember having a bunch of conversation about america while i was while i'm in africa because you're just no. enjoying it because you're like man in about 10 days paradise is going to be over and i'm going to be it's kind of like you're telling yourself man i'm going to be put in south of uh, in, in, in this way you know you're going to be put away and you know but it's like you know you have to go back home to go work and do business um but um Absolutely. It's like, you know, enjoy every minute, every second, 
and because some people never even get a chance to go back and you know i hear people say man i gotta go back i was like yeah it's you no know, it's what it is and you know we feel purpose because we've been to africa consistently but we you know we're, we're doing yeah. that so we can get you there you know we, we eventually want to settle and get certain other things done but you know we're personally taking a hand and bringing on bringing you over to africa and that's you know that's as good as you get as good as gold but appreciate Absolutely. your brother appreciate your family not a problem. We we'll go ahead and let Bo Money get up out of here. And uh, Bo Money, put your stuff in the chat before you go, because I'm going to stay on with the other brothers for about another hour. That way, if folks uh, ask me, I don't have to look for it. I could just kind of come back to the chat and keep it up on the uh, up on the front page so people can, can call you since you're going uh, a couple times before we go back to Sierra Leone, because we haven't really put our November itinerary together yet. But but we're going to bring up uh, our brother, Mr. Lofton. And uh, we're going to bring up our other brother. What up? What up, Loft Daddy? In the house. Yeah, man. What's going on, Jack? Yeah, everything's going good. Going real good. Going yeah. Come up and talk about that that new citizenship, baby. <laughs> yes, sir. You're talking about the one with the green card. Yeah, man, you know that that green thing, that green thing. Yes, sir. See, you got to be double breasted around here. <laughs> Better believe it. You, know what I'm you oh, got to yeah. be double breasted around here. You feel me? I feel you. Yeah, man. So, what uh, you think of uh, what you think of some of the things we covered on 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 uh? Just being able to to go to Africa for tourism to kind of feel your way around. What do you think about some of the things we cover? You think we covered everything, or is there anything you think we might have forgot? Because you you're a fresh pair of ears, and uh, so what you think? Well, I came in kind of late <clears throat> on y'all discussion, but uh, sound like Bo Money, y'all got it pretty much, you no know, lockdown. Y'all done it so many times before, so. And he was absolutely right about the hotel situation, so that's good. Uh, and and all the beautiful artifacts and things you get to see, man, it's awesome. It's a new experience, I'm telling you. For those who've never been to Africa, you need to be making your way. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> yeah, that's why I decided to just entitle, entitle that. Um, entitle, let me see, brother. You can uh, unmute yourself. I don't have you muted. Yeah. So anytime you want, let me see. Make sure I don't have you muted. Hold on. Can't unmute your guests because they chose it to mute themselves. Okay, so you got to unmute yourself. But um, yeah, man, just imagine all that beautiful artwork, all the all the beautiful man. Because I love tie and dye, so all the tie and dye, different man fabrics. But cheap. I think I bought I bought my purple tie and dye. I got that fabric. I got four yards for six yeah. US dollars. Six dollars. Six dollars, four yards. And I was able to take those four yards and make me a complete short set that's just fire because I ain't had nothing purple. And I was like, man, I wonder how would this look? Man, when I sent that over to the tailor. He came back with that fit. I was like, man, I want to put that sucker on right then. <laughs> I couldn't wait to put that thing yeah. on, man. And I got a good lick on, on 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 him doing that design. So when I go back, man, I'm I'm definitely gonna go back to that same vendor that I bought the, that fabric from. And I'm gonna, man, I'm gonna spend about sixty dollars with dude. I'm gonna make oh. his damn day. And when this time when I go back to the tailor, I'm gonna say, "Look, dude, you got two weeks, and I want ten outfits made. Ten. Hey, and the, you to look, you to go with, and no, to go along with the ten or twelve I already had. Because now I'm thinking, like, when I go to Africa, I could just wear a different fit every day. Yeah. You know oh, what yeah. I'm saying? And be fresh, and be fresh to death, and have, I mean." Just too much space in my luggage, so I don't even have to worry about the over fifty pound weight limit on my luggage. You know what I mean? Absolutely. 
I'm waiting on. Oh, I, I, I contacted uh, Peter, gave him the information. I didn't give him the number because I couldn't find my book. I had all the other information written down there. But uh, my chauffeur driver is supposed to be getting going back around and, and looking up that information for me. So hopefully he'll get back with me tomorrow on the, on the place. Yeah. Because I want to be able to, when I, when I go back, I want to leave a suitcase. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Leave. I, could, I, 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 leave. I didn't think about that. But yeah, I didn't you think know? about that, but you're right. I could leave me a suitcase as well. Okay. That's right. That's a good a big idea. And that way you ain't got to tote so much back except just what you want. Yeah. You know? Well, that's what, yeah. that's what I'm in the process of doing, eliminating some of the stuff that we're going to be carrying back and forth. So you're right. That's a great idea, you know, and, and that kind of goes into that kind of goes into what we were talking about. The subject matter for the night is, is basically being able to go over on the tour and see the country, meet the people, get an idea of the cuisine get an idea of landmarks, get an idea of the museums, get an idea of the people, the language, and actually like really dig your teeth into the culture. So yeah. I'm sure you would definitely recommend people taking trips over there first. Am I right or wrong? Oh, you're yeah, absolutely right. <clears throat> absolutely. So give my give them a little a little taste of what you experienced on the, on your first your first run as far as the people the culture the food the the landmarks it's, it's kind of because I know people they hear from me all the time but now you started out uh, with the idea of going to Africa you came you came across certain channels so just kind of give people a, a little quick rundown on what spark you to just basically get up and go to Africa and now ultimately becoming a, a Sierra Leonean citizen. One of the, what sparked me was me wanting to know my identity and where I come from. The part of my life, part of my family. What what you always have that question, you know, or what what where do I come from? Where do where's the origin of my people in Africa? Africa is so large. And uh I really wanted to know, are we been interested in Africa? And I heard so many other things about it, but I happen to know for a fact I do good research that Africa is a very beautiful place. Uh if if you ever heard of uh Garden of Eden, now you know. So having that sparked my interest. <clears throat> I decided uh, after listening to four or five different YouTubers and finding out exactly where I come from, my origin, my family origin in, in uh, Africa, which was Sierra Leone, I decided to get focused get focused on that, just that area. And uh, I found two, three brothers that was, uh, had their uh, channel dedicated just for Sierra Leone. And so I started making, listening, making contact, and of course, doing my research. And then after I uh, made uh, contact with the touring company, I decided to go ahead and, and drop down the the uh, necessary funds to make it, you know, a reality. And then uh, travel, highly anticipated, very highly anticipated uh, move. And it was, it was, the experience was more than what I thought it was going to be, much more. I mean, you get an overload, your sensories are just overloaded. It just, it's just too much to overtake, to take in in just two weeks. Uh, the smell, getting off the plane, going into the city, going over the uh, uh, the peninsula, the, the everything's just so clean, crisp and clean. Uh, 
no industrial waste that you can smell, you know, like a battery factory and you know, all that nuclear waste. Everything's just clean. The people, I can tell that the people is eating good just by looking at their skin. You know, I'm, I'm not seeing people with all kind of eczema and psoriasis and, and uh, fungus in their head, you know, a hair falling out. So I know they're drinking good water. So who don't want that good health? Man, it, 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 and all their skin was smooth and beautiful, eating the bottom of their feet, you know, just smooth. So it was, it was a, <clears throat> it was an absolutely educational experience for me to see all my people and how they interact with visitors, strangers, especially diaspora. They was uh, very friendly. Uh, everybody happy to see you. They, they even want to interact with you. They're not reserved and pulled back, you know, like, oh, well, you know, this is a foreigner. You know, he may have leprosy or something. Uh, no, they, 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 they come up and speak and uh, assist you in, in a way that they can, you know, you know, really make you just feel at home, you know, and especially when, <laughs> when we went to the villages. Kenema and Mbo, you know, out in the provinces, uh, that was personal. That was personal. So that was a, a real heavy duty experience meeting my people, the actual people, mm -hmm. my origin, where I come from, 650 years ago. Let me, let me, ask, you, let me yeah. ask you this, uh, uh, Mr. Lawson. They said that. And I know you heard this countless times that well the the, the Africans don't like the African Americans. So why are y'all going over to Africa and these people don't even like y'all? Did you experience any of that, or is that just some uh some rumors and, and, and propaganda that they try to keep us and our continental brothers and sisters apart? And just another uh uh <clears throat> rumor that they created, that they like to create uh, disinformation. Uh, they've been doing it for over uh, 600, 700 years. So why, what, what make you think they're going to stop now? So uh, that is absolutely false. Just like I just got to saying, you know, just like I just got to saying, uh, they welcome us. Uh, they interact with us. So uh, they're not foolish people. They know who we are. They know where we're coming from. They know that we are lost hundreds of years of uh, not being with our family, not being with our folks, not being with our people right there in West Africa. Oh, yeah. So they do know. So they get an opportunity to learn and experience us just like we get the opportunity to learn and experience them. Yeah, but I would say that uh, at least in West Africa, because a lot of folks are like just picking countries and just going to them. And what, what I don't like necessarily is the fact that people are just picking countries and just decide I'm going to just go to this country and don't really have no real connection to the country what i like about liberia and and especially sierra leone is the fact that we have a program set up where you can first do your your, your, your dna test if you if you link if you have a a uh linkage or lin a legacy or a lineage with 16 of uh, one of the 16 tribes that's there we can go to sierra leone where this is where your your ancestor was taken from and what i really like about what we're doing in sierra leone as opposed to going to different uh, african nations is that the people in those countries in that country know the history and all about what happened during slavery 
we're not strangers when we go back they welcome home my brother welcome home my sister they understand what happened during slavery they have museums erected and to remember for remembrance of what happened they can tell you the slavery aspect of what took place on that side of the great pond or the big pond right well we know what happened on our end on the america side they know what happened on them on the african side and then what i like what i really like because when i look at other nations over there uh west coast the west coast of africa a lot of them may not really truly understand they know slavery took place but they don't really understand that it how how barbaric and how um detrimental it was to us where in sierra leone they truly understand and they get it and anytime you talk to just the average person on the street they truly understand what we when you when they find out that you know we came from america they understand that oh man what, what brought you to sierra leone then when you tell them oh, i retraced my my uh my lineage and i traced it back to the to the Mende people or the, the Timini, right? Or or the Limba. When they when you tell them that, they like, oh, welcome home, my brother. Yes, yes. It's a, it's a miracle. They they literally praise you for having the wherewithal to trace it back and having the the funds to actually come back to the origin, right? And try to reintroduce yourself to the culture. People really have a a sort of uh reverence for us where i don't really see that in other african nations did you did you experience that as well yeah yeah I, yeah i experienced that as well oh yeah because i don't really see Absolutely. that in, even when i go to ghana or, or gambia when we was in senegal you know it's beautiful country beautiful beaches beautiful people but a lot of them didn't truly understand the the african-american for lack of a better term experience that took place here in the americas they really didn't truly have a real a real good grasp of what really happened to us here in uh divided snakes yep <clears throat> and <clears throat> great part about <clears throat> going to sail Leone about the history that you learn about the slave trade like you said you mentioned earlier, we knew how and where we ended up on this side of the Atlantic Ocean through the, through the history book that they allow us to know about on this side. Uh, uh, South Carolina, all the way up to uh, Chesapeake Bay, Virginia, all the way down to Florida. But when you get to Sierra Leone, you've seen the actual beginning Actual slave holding uh, buildings that they had erected for the mere purpose of taking another human being from their native land and enslaving them. Uh, you, you get to see the beginning of everything and no monuments and no cannons and and everything's still there. The facts are still there. So that was awesome. Being able to put the other half of that puzzle together after 60-something years. And that's the history that the divided snakes will not give you or you have to go to find it. You you have to go there yeah. to find it. Yeah, you can't speak They don't volunteer. Enemy. Yeah. Yeah, you can't expect your enemy to uh to teach you the truth on your uh if he if he has dominated you to the point where he has erased your history you can't expect him to turn around and then teach you all about who you were in racial history it's just not going to happen so in order for you to really find out the greatness and really find out uh, a part of the story that we don't have like you said the puzzle pieces you have to actually migrate or or take at least a tour over to west africa so you can see the slave dungeons you can see the cannons and 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 when when the british and the the portuguese the spanish the french when they yeah. when they fought they put cannons on all of the the, the shores there 
or where they had their little uh, slave dungeons and, and, and forts, they would put the crown or some emblem to represent what nation they uh, was from on the cannon. So I have some pictures of the crown and the dates on the can cannons when I went to Boss, I Boss Island. Because so, some folks over here uh, uh, have the mindset that slavery didn't take place or it didn't take place the way that uh, that a lot of people are saying it took place. They say that it wasn't no uh, dungeons. It wasn't no uh, uh, killings. It wasn't no rapes. It wasn't no barbaric treatment. They're saying these didn't happen. And when you go over there, the evidence and the ruins show something completely different. <laughs> completely different. So, um, it's one of those things where you just have to book a tour and go over there and see for yourself because y'all just won't believe that all this stuff is still there. The ruins are still there. Uh, and when you go there, if you close your eyes and you settle your spirit, you, you still can feel some of the horrors that took place there as the, the guide is telling you the history of those ruins. You close your eyes and be still. You can actually feel the, the 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 demonic things that took place on that soil because you know the earth has memory, right? So if a lot of uh, people went through dramatic horrors on that land on that soil, that is going to transfer into the earth. And now here we can come all these years later and stand there, and we can get a sense of what really happened there. So for folks to say that this didn't take place, they literally out of their mind. And it also shows the fact that they have not ventured off of the little, you know, neighborhood that they grew up in. You, you haven't went nowhere. If you go anywhere up and down the western coast of Africa, the, the remnants and the ruins are still there from all of the slave dungeons. They, they didn't fall in. Even the ones that did collapse, the bricks are still there. The cannons, you know that's not going to uh, go anywhere. Them cannons are still there. Yeah, yeah. And they have the crown on there with the date. Yeah, okay? 1753, yeah, the, the, the dates. The British crown, the king's uh, cannons uh, with his name on it. You know, that the property belonged to the, to, to, the kingdom. Of England, the King of England, yeah, it's still there. The different grave sites, uh, uh, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the grave sites, my brothers. Hey, hey. Oh, there you go. We was wondering where you was coming in. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I got a question for y'all. Both of you guys know the national anthem. No, man. You know we ain't had time to learn you want me to the sing national it? anthem. Let me sing it. We. we we was hey, we've been over there partying and having fun. Hey, be honest with you, when you put that when you put that question in the chat, the first thing that came to my mind was, hell, I don't know the national anthem for America, and I've been here 50, 56 years. <laughs> well, I'm about to give you the national anthem of Sierra Leone. Y'all ready? Go ahead, give it to us. Yeah, we ready. Hi, we exalt the realm of the free. Great is the love the I don't I don't messed up. How we exalt the realm of the free. How we exalt the realm of the free. Great is our love. Oh, five, I don't mess it up. <laughs> I don't mess it up. I don't mess it up. Let me go again. How we exalt the realm of the free. Great is our love for. Oh man, I don't forgot. <laughs> you, you, you ask it, you ask it up, and you know. Yeah, man. We exalt the realm of the free. Great is the love we have for thee. I don't got it now. Firmly united, ever we stand. 
singing the praises on, of our native land. We raise up our hearts and our voices of high. The hills and the valleys we echo and cry. Blessing and peace be ever thine own. Land that we love, our Sierra Leone. <laughs> hey, there you go, there you go, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's been 25 years, man. 25 years going back and forth, man. I blew basic things like that. Oh, my God. Exactly. When you put it in there now, I've heard it. I've heard it plenty of times, but in my mind, all kind of things be racing through my mind. I said, well, when we over there, because, you know, we all plan to live there, and, and, and you know, we're marrying uh, uh, women from the different tribes, and we're going to have babies, and we're going to have businesses, so we're going to have time uh, to learn the language. Boss man, I got one, too. Huh? Boss man to the right, got, I got one, too. Yeah, love that, yeah, man. You must have missed our you last know. live a couple of days ago. No, no, hey, I'm not talking about you. I know yours. I'm talking about the man to the right. He don't got one too. Yeah, yeah. You don't know. Yeah. You don't know. Yeah. You better talk to somebody. We not. Hey, we, we not. We not playing around, man. We not playing. I know y'all ain't playing around. Me, hey, <laughs> hey! If you ain't got one, I was gonna hook you up with a Timmy woman, man. See there? <laughs> Yeah. I was gonna hook you up with a Timmy woman, man. But hey, y'all good, uh, y'all y'all good. But any brothers out yeah, there, man. yeah, hey, yeah, need a Timmy woman? You go to my village, man. We got plenty of them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That even I'm, when uh, yeah. West Coast is out right. there with us, you see West Coast name in the chat. He also found one when he went out there. Man, we not playing no games, man. Well, I'm I'm playing. Playing. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's what I'm I, talking I about, y'all. I got, I got me a Mende woman. She ready to oh, go. Oh, you got your Mende woman. Okay, that's yes, good. Sir. Yes, sir. That's good. Hey, yes, sir. Yeah, the Mende say, how do they say hello? Be <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, be Yeah. Yeah, we're yeah. 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 not, we not playing no games, man, because... Uh, oh, 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 oh y'all yeah. went to, y'all went to Bo or Kenema? Y'all went to Bo and Kenema? We went to we went to both, yeah. We went to Bo and Kenema. And, and oh, right, one those time, are the two big cities. Those are the two big cities for the time, men to I try. went to uh, McKinney, McKinney, too. Bo and Kenema. <laughs> yeah. Bo and Kenema, that's the two big cities for the men they tried, man. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I used to go to Bo when I was I was young, real young. Yeah, my dad went, but, you know, us Timonese, you know, it's like the the western area and the north. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you went to the north, uh that district you went to, Bombay, Bum, uh, district. That's where I come from. It's uh, okay. uh our chiefdom is the Sandalaka chiefdom, and uh, the the village actually where I come from is called Camelo. Yeah, Camelo. Okay. Camelo. Yeah, Camelo and, and Sandalaka chiefdom. Yep. So yeah, we took you, man. See, we we getting these dates mixed up, man. If I know the next time, I, because I go every three months. Then... Uh oh, what happened? Uh, okay. he, he clicked out. He, he he hit the wrong button. <laughs> he hit the wrong button. Okay. You yeah. You back. You back. Okay. There you go. There you go. Yeah. So. You said, what about uh, the date, sir? No, I say I go back and forth. I recently lost my dad, so uh, now oh, okay. I, Sorry, I go it. every. Okay. Huh? Yeah, yeah, my so, yeah, Sorry. Yeah, so now you know I gotta keep an eye on things. So I go back and forth every three months, and uh, you know I'm, I'm trying to. One of these times I go back and forth. I'm trying to see if I <laughs> could catch you guys over there because I'm. Yeah, I'm trying to give y'all a super tour. <laughs> okay. Take you to my village and all that, man. They, they, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, fix a big ass feast for y'all. You know, that's cows and about, chicken and, and 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 goats. <laughs> you know, that's that's when the, that's a welcome to the village. Ah, uh, they go all out, oh, man. Okay. But I'm gonna catch you. I'm gonna catch you guys one of these times, man. But I do the okay. every three. The next time I'm thinking of going is uh. 
August, like late August. August. Yeah, late August. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, like I'm going to go over there for like at least about three months. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, next time we think it's in November um, because our next tour, we're trying to set up the dates for November. Uh, and then after that, like I said, this last time we were there, the president was saying that um, – <clears throat> Hopefully it, it works out that way that, that they plan to give us some free land for folks who want to return, yeah. basically returnees. And I think that's a great thing, man, because like, like I tell people, we we serious about getting out of America. But like when we come <clears throat> over, we really ain't got nowhere to stay. Now, we know we got enough people over there where we can stay with folks. But, you know, over here, we mostly got houses. People got houses. People got rental properties. We're looking to sell this stuff and and build our own domicile in, in, in Sierra Leone. So when the president said that he would give returnees land, man, that was that was music to my ears, you know? So that can give us a he head probably start. Talking about, uh, <coughs> he probably talking about, you know where the uh, the islands, where the uh, the forts are? Both well, yeah, but that ain't what I heard. We heard, what we heard, Mr. Lawson, we heard it was going to be like what? Either no, ball, man. man. I seen the land that he uh, where? Uh, free yeah, Bo or Ken? Is he Bo or Kenema? I think going to a boat, right, Mr. Lawson? Yeah, going to a boat coming out of Freetown, about about forty minutes from Bo. Uh, no, coming from Freetown. Freetown. <clears throat> going way, toward the way going to Bo. Yeah, going towards where? Bo, Bo. Well, going towards Bo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It might be Moyamba. That's where my mom come from. Moyamba District. They got a big old uh, rest stop over there. Right. Everybody sell flat. a lot of stuff. Yeah, and it's real flat. That's the area. Yeah, right yeah, Moyamba. Here. That's Moyamba. Moyamba. Moyamba District. Yep, that's Moyamba. It's, it, well, well the, it, the rest stop over there is called Moyamba Junction. It's one of the best rest stops everywhere. <laughs> I mean, it, it's... I don't know if y'all on your way to Bo, y'all must have stopped over there. I don't know. I don't know if we stopped it because I'm, I'm sure I would remember it. But that's a big, so that's a rest stop. Down. When I say it's a rest stop, we got all. You can't even get out your 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 car. The girls all over you, boys over there trying to sell you something. <laughs> you know, they don't even wait for you to get <laughs> yeah. out. Moyamba, well, yeah, that's, that's on the way to. Moyamba, well, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the area we 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 passed through it, and uh, Aaliyah pointed it out to me that this is the area that he talked about back in 2008 with the uh, you know, the leaders of Sierra Leone, then president, and that was the area they've been talking about setting aside. That that is the area of land he's talking about. Yeah, that's Moyamba yeah. District. Moyamba District. Yeah. It's in the south. Yeah, it's in the yeah. south. That's but the hotland, the south yeah. and the east, are the hotland of the Mende tribe. <laughs> oh yeah, and and it's not in the heart of all that traffic and you know all that movement with the KKs yeah, and yeah. motorcycles. Yeah, no, both both yeah. the south of Sierra Leone is all flatland. Ah, you love it over there. You like we in the north and in the western region, we got a lot of uh, the mountains. You know, we got flatlands okay. too, the Timney tribe, yeah. but we are around a lot of mountains. But like the Mende tribe, you guys are, uh, particularly in the south, Bo, yeah. uh, Bo district, Boyamba district, Bonk, man, it's all flatland. You go to Bo city, all the whole city is flatland. <laughs> yeah. Completely flatland, man. It's, it's, it's beautiful in the south. <laughs> and that's what we want is some flatland because a lot of us want to yeah, go yeah, out. Yeah, I mean, that's, like that's your place. That's that's a hard yeah. time of the Mende tribe, the southern southern province, <laughs> and the eastern province. <laughs> yep. Because okay. yep. I'm sure yep. you could tell America in trouble. I'm sure you could tell now, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. America in trouble. America's in deep trouble, bro. Bro, hey. So. Me too. <laughs> in the north, we 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 doing it big over there, but uh uh. Agriculture, uh, fish yeah. farms, gold, you, you know, the iron ore is over there with the Chinese, but like the, like Moyamba district, 
the Moyamba, which is close to both, you guys go rutile. You guys got a lot of uh, bauxite, you know? Bauxite, yeah, and, bauxite. And, and it go, going towards Kenema. You see, uh, in the east, it's a, it's a district. The only other tribe that's out there outside of your tribe, the Mende tribe, is the Kono tribe, where the diamond's at. But it's a river that comes oh, wow. from Kono district coming down to Kenema called the Sewa River. You see, in the bottom of the river, a lot of diamonds. The top oh, yeah. of the river, that, that's where the, you know, they, they made the blood diamonds at the Connor district. But all that overflow <laughs> comes right there into Mende Land, Kenema. <laughs> you know? Really? You got yeah, yeah Sewa yeah, River. Yeah. The Sewa River. I mean, anywhere yeah. where you, you got white sand. White a sand, lot of you're right. In the, bed. The, gravel, huh? the gravels. You dig the gravel out and you find the diamonds. I've been there. Yeah, I you see. Gravel. Yeah, you see, you guys, man, uh, uh, you guys, I gotta talk to you guys. Uh, uh, go ham off camera, you know. I don't want to put my business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't, don't put it. Don't you put, don't put too much out there, now. But uh, you can always email yeah, me. And yeah, then you can yeah, do it that I'll, way I'll email you. But uh, since you folks, guys are already paperwork already satisfied and everything, we're gonna take it to another level. <laughs> you know. Oh yeah. That, oh yeah. I will catch you guys. Absolutely. That's the whole idea, man. That's the reason why we're going to start having more discussions on here so we can get more people involved because uh, as, as more and more as America look like it's going gonna, it's gonna to go belly up, people are going to be scrambling to, to get up out of here. So we got to at least try to provide folks who want to, to uh, get up out of here and go to Africa and do the right thing. We want to be able to be that bridge to bring them over safely and securely and, and then make sure they have a decent transition to uh so we can start you know africa is the future and we want to we all need to be a part of making sure that that happens as these other powers start to uh diminish in their power you know the 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 the, the new the new thing is africa that's the future yeah yeah they know it, they know it. everybody knows it you yep. know what i'm saying we got all these skills we went to all these mm -hmm. universities we didn't picked up all these trades. A lot of us in finance. A lot of us want to do uh, agriculture. We want to do farming. We want to, man. We got a lot of talented people, man. And to be able to bring these people to Sierra Leone, man, it's gonna yeah, be a new a day, man. The, the president likes that. You know, it's it's. I'm telling you, bro. Uh, all it takes is pioneers. You yep. see. That's what we Some are. people, what even we the are. one, yeah, <laughs> early scholars. You know, I didn't say, I didn't say that. That what they say, the early uh, bird catch the worm. Yeah, you go out there, you go out there, be the pace setter. You know what I'm saying? Everybody yeah. else gonna yeah. follow. <clears throat> you set the pace. Everybody else gonna follow. Just, that's just a problem. Just to get <clears throat> like-minded people to come together and start the ball rolling. You start the ball rolling, everybody right. else gonna follow suit. Everybody else gonna right. follow suit. You see? Right. Yeah. So I'm telling you, I was talking to uh this guy in construction today. Is it was building uh some uh, uh buildings for my dad before my dad passed. And right. I was showing him uh because I had two strips which I built out of clay. And I'm renting them out, room and room and living room. And uh okay. I'll show you them construction in America, you know. I never saw I, we never had that discussion. We have all types of construction conversation until the day. You know what he told me? He said he said if the way they're building the houses in America, if that's the way they was building them in Africa. They, they would don't they would don't build them like like uh eight nine times faster <laughs> because with 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 back home the difference is concrete takes 21 days to dry the so set the up yeah be a little, it would be slower it said but uh particle boards <laughs> and uh sheet rock and uh uh, yeah. uh insulation they say, man, yeah. you get my boys there? 
my boys will build a, a, a city <laughs> in, in a year. <laughs> It's too easy. It's too easy. Yeah, yeah. I absolutely I believe that. In the African soil, yeah, you're right. It's too easy it, for them. He said, they just said, don't have the wood. Yeah. Yeah. He said, because over there, we have a body of wood. But like in the city, it's shone down on. You see what I'm saying? Everybody want concrete, concrete, concrete. They don't want particle yeah. boards. They don't want uh, shit rock. They don't want that. They want and concrete housing wood. Yeah. or brick. Yeah. yeah, they don't want wood housing. <clears throat> you come over here, you trying to show somebody. If people come from Sierra Leone and you come over here trying to show them your house, they'll be like, bro, that's what you got? A board house? Nah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you ain't a frame house. I live in concrete. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, yeah, you got a frame house. Oh, I don't want yeah. that. Burn. I don't want that. I want concrete. Uh, concrete. Yeah. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? That's, uh, so yeah. because, yeah, exactly. because it takes uh, forever. Uh, um, forever, name. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they, they don't. I know. They, I, me and Mister Lawson talk about that. Just the, the last time we talked, that everybody yeah. likes to build with concrete in, in Africa. That's all across West Africa. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. They wouldn't dare. Build. It's either mud. I see a lot of Timmy. And when you go out in the village, they deal. They build. Yeah, in the uh, village is there. They got their own. But you see that mud. That's what I used on mine. But you know, I don't. The difference is with mine and back in the day. <laughs> that mud right there is insulation. Your house yeah. don't ever get hot. It stay cool. That's but the yeah, modern that's day the version. Area that it creates. Yeah. Yeah, the modern day version is you mix it with concrete. You mix it with a whole bunch of items that will up. It, it's an upscale. You upscale it, <laughs> and it comes. Right. It, the PSI is almost as strong as concrete. You know that's what I use with my strips, my two strips I got <laughs> of apartments. I was renting out, and when it, when it's hot, everybody likes it. But the way I the way uh, it's a it's a this, it's a it's a dude from Jamaica. That actually opened my eyes to that. <laughs> he was the, like my instructor when I went to go on to take the class. And mm -hmm. then he showed okay. me what he did in Jamaica. And then he took it to another level. Because he, he, he did, his whole family, they did construction. They took it with another level because they were doing, they was using dye. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? You know how you make yeah. the uh, yep. cobblestones over here? You make cobblestones... You make uh, okay. the you know the, the the outside the bricks all that would die, but he took it to another level. The finished product is world class. That's the dude right there that opened my eyes to that thing. I took them boys, I showed it to them boys down there. They built me two strips of apartments, room, room, living room, uh, a bathroom, five hundred dollars a year. Quick, <laughs> they go like they're hotcakes. <laughs> Quick. So, 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 so you gonna have to send me some, uh, email me some finished uh, photos of it so I could get an idea and show folks what they look like. So if you don't mind telling us how much, just general, what you pay for something like that, without the land, just just, just with the the construction of the building itself, without the land, what would something like that cost people so they could have an idea of what kind of money they need to be putting together? Uh, if you're doing a uh... No, it, it, it comes from the land. The dirt comes from the land. True. So the number one thing is you got to use uh, the dirt from the land because the topsoil, take off the topsoil, which is what you use for agricultural purposes, right? Right. Then you go, like the second layer, the red dirt. You see, when you went to Sierra Leone, you see a lot of red dirt, right? Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. That, that's the clay you use. That's the rich property. You use that with sand, cement, and not a lot of water. That's in concrete. It's a okay, damp they, mix. Like a damp, like a real damp mix. They form it and then bake it in the sun, right? Yeah, well, well, well. Uh, you don't want to bake it in the sun. You want it damp mm -hmm. so it can it'll be a quick dry because it's shrinking size. So you sprinkle water on it. Instead of like concrete, where you need a whole lot of water. You see what I'm oh, saying? This is oh, making the new damp, damp blocks. Then it shrinks when it goes out in the sun, it shrinks in size. 
He comes out like like bricks. But the, the, what I did was add this uh, dye to it. I had coloring. I had, had different molds. You know how these are, uh, like out here in America, like them big, uh, they rich people houses. You know how they do the cobblestones. They might mold them in different molds. You know, like how they do a stone work on a, a rich people yeah. houses. They are yeah, they yeah. all in different shapes and sizes and molded. So you get the mold, you make you make get them boys to do different molds for you, and you do that, and then you take them out, and those are your bricks. You 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 use them in yeah, you use them like your front entrance, like the front of the houses. Most of the time, like in America, it's mostly brick. That that's what you use, and that is stronger. The PSI is almost close to concrete. You just use dye, different coloring. You got you got another construction site. They got different uh, colors they use, different okay. color dyes. You know, so, like concrete so dye. They, they want to make each of them uh, uh, moldings, them uh, uh, cobblestones into different colors. They use different dye, like you know. So you just do that, add that to it. That cut back on your cost on painting because you don't want to paint. So right. you, you 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 use that in molding. Yeah, you do that. That's that's what really I'm trying. I'm, I want to go big time, but when I settle down, I, I you know I got <laughs> land in different places. I want to go. I want just like how they're doing the uh, apartments. Oh, that's why I was talking to that boy. I said, "Can you?" This is what I want him to do. I showed him some of these pictures. Of how quick they put up these houses over here. You know how they had everything like done in a warehouse, right? Right. Pretty done. Yeah. Like you 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 uh assemble furniture. You know, everything that can come in a case, little case, you assemble furniture. That's how they got it going on with these houses right here. So I, that's why I was trying to school these boys. If y'all could come up with a way, well, like one or two people do the assemble, then the other people do the, the take it the, to the construction site and put it together. If y'all could do it quicker like that, <laughs> you know, they, that, that's, yeah. that's, that's my idea right there. That's what I want to go big time with. It got housing, so we, it's two hundred and fifty thousand. Wait, wait, go but ahead. The, we listen. Go but ahead. The, but the question was, what, what, what? The problem is, he get to it. He get to it now. Okay. So go oh. ahead. What, yeah, like a bag of cement. Okay, if you want to do thirty-five br bricks, one bag of cement, five wheelbarrows of dirt, two wheelbarrows of sand. One uh, uh 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 well it's not a bowl it's like a little uh it's, it's shaped like a bowl of of uh rocks they have those rocks right there okay that they're, they're gonna make it thirty six to thirty eight uh, uh bricks but they're bigger than these bricks out here oh yeah they're oh, bigger yeah. than these bricks right here yes sir. <laughs> I see y'all pass by. <laughs> I see, see y'all pass by. That's what I'm talking about. But you see, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Though, because we got a like a little housing shortage, right? Out there, yeah. In, yeah, in Freetown and other big cities. You know? So you, you make that. And I, that's why I'm trying to go big time with it. Because I'm trying to see if them boys can really copy this boy, these white boys over here. Because they come in with yeah. everything. You see how they come in with everything all pre-made <laughs> to the yeah, construction site. Yeah, just put it yeah. together. That's what that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, that makes sense. I was, thinking the same. I was thinking the same thing, but the people just kind of want a, a general idea. If they did one of those type of houses, just give them a, a, a general idea what they could be looking to spend. So because people, their mind just run away from them with what things cost. And by you doing it you can give people a, a a really good sense of what kind of money they need to come over with well they're trying to build a house or apartments let's say they're trying to build houses right now so they can have a place to live themselves and then oh, maybe themselves? later on venture out yeah themselves well i never did that i did i did like one bedroom apartments 
You know, that's okay, what I go, did with. Let's go with. A, let's go with. A, a okay, one like the one woman. bedroom apartment. I have a. I have a shower. Uh, shower and commode. Uh, uh, bedroom and living room. Uh, it cost me. You can like cement for the one strip was like seven hundred dollars. Who gets you a hundred a hundred bags of cement? Okay. Okay. Then. Uh, Three hundred dollars for uh one trip of sand, okay, and that's then a, that's uh, a dump truck. That's a dump truck. That's uh, a dump truck full of yeah, sand. Yeah, a dump truck. Yeah, three hundred dollars for okay. a trip of sand, okay. Okay, and then uh the rocks, they 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 they, they sell it by bowls, like a bowl of, of rocks. Because what they do is they have a big piece of rock and they burn it up and cut it onto little pieces. So and then they bust. Uh, yeah, they bust. Let me see. But like three, three, three or four bowls of, of of rocks into the into the mix. Okay. That would build you one strip. That's living room, uh, bathroom, uh, shower and commode. Uh, living room, bathroom, shower and commode, and 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 bedroom. By so units, you saying basically a one level, on one level, yeah, you, one strip. Yeah, because when you say when you say strips, they may not understand what that means. But basically, you're saying okay, like one, one, level, level. one level, like apartments, one level. Yeah, like, one level. Like okay, like five doors, five doors, five apartment, five apartment uh doors, but it's just one bedroom. Yep. Okay. So and what about yep labor, labor. Well, well, labor, you get the guys as they go. For example, you got the guys doing the bricks first. You see, I give you $100. If, you, if you're if using 3,500 uh, bricks, right? The blocks. Okay. For the whole, for, for, the five, for five uh bedroom apartments, right? You get the guy, I give you $100 for every uh, uh, 300 or 400 blocks you make. <laughs> So you uh, to get uh, thirty five hundred blocks, you might get them like two two or three hundred dollars. He might have a, somebody wow. else he shares it with to help. Yep. So that's the first okay. thing you do. Make sure every, all the you estimate the heights you want it and 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 the length and the width, and then you estimate you the, the when you lay your concrete your foundation. You do a sample, sample, right? A sample room, like the room where the, the square foot, the what is called square foot, square area, square foot uh, uh, yeah, square of the footing. room. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. The square room of the of the room you want to rent. Then you you do like what uh, like they, they lay the we call, we call the brick layer. He lay the blocks around like the first layer, and then. You, if you want the roof, if you want the walls 10 foot high or whatever foot high you want it, <laughs> you, you multiply how many bricks it'll take times that. But for that, those five bedrooms were like 3,500 bricks all right. together for the five bedrooms. Okay. Okay. Five, yep. Yeah, because then inside, that's the outside and the inside because they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna petition it. The room, the the shower is in the room. Okay, like the commode is outside, because if somebody come to to visit them, you don't want to go into his room to get into the commode to the to use the bathroom. So I made the commode yeah, outside. Yeah. Then the, the the it's the shower and the bedroom, and then the living room. You see, okay. keep it simple. So you're saying basically, yep. yeah, you you saying basically you, you're looking at. Under a few thousand dollars. One bedroom yep. apartment? That a one bedroom? Is he saying? Yeah. One bedroom. One yeah. bedroom shower and, and commode. Okay. Yeah. So you're basically saying under a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. Is what I'm it sounds like what I'm hearing. Yep. But you gotta have well, that doesn't include the land because you're gonna buy the land. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I want to keep the land yeah. separate. I just want to give them an idea of what it would yeah, cost. The, the, the construction, the, the construction is buying in the thousands. 
But the yeah. thing is, you don't have to. You don't have to give those guys all your money up front. Yeah, you, you tell them. It out. Yeah, the first thing first, they make the bricks. That's all you need. Okay. You, the bricks is more important. They make all the yes. bricks that you need. You know, for the whole thing. <laughs> you know, right. then you have other guys come in. They lay the foundation. You got to pay them separate. Uh, yeah, I didn't add that. I didn't add that. That's 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 gonna run you by maybe. Is that is that? Let me ask you this: Is it a concrete foundation you put it on? It, it's gotta be a concrete foundation. <laughs> okay. It gotta be. And it's just a, it's just and, a slab, and, right? Uh, yeah, that's a separate job. That's okay. a separate job. You might give them like two, three thousand dollars to the, for the guy that comes in and lay the. That's all he does. Lay the concrete. Then you then when he's doing laying the concrete, the, he and his team he got the plumbing guy and the electrician. The plumbing guy is gonna lay his pipe. The electrician is gonna lay their pipe, right? So it don't okay. interfere. So they put it as part of the concrete because why the concrete is expensive is because you gotta buy uh, iron rod, a lot of rocks. The rock thing is, uh, <coughs> you see these people on the side. They burn rocks and they break them up. So they yeah, sell them by them. bowl. They sell them by bowl. They might sell you three or four dollars a bowl of of, of 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 rocks, right? We might be like okay. uh like a tub. It's like a tub of rocks. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And which yeah. might be by uh let me see. Uh all depends, like three dollars. You might need a whole heap that high, like a sand, you know how sand. When the when the deposit sand, how high it is, you might need one yeah. like that, <laughs> that high. <laughs> Which might be one yeah. like five foot, yeah, like five foot high. I don't know how many bowls that is gonna be. Maybe that will run you like five hundred dollars because you need that for the concrete. Yeah. Then you are gonna need okay. to buy iron rods, which is expensive. It's steel. Uh. One, uh, 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 with, with like a ton of iron rods is going for like uh, $50. $50. Okay. They, they're selling them in bundles, right? Mm -hmm. like, yeah. But you, you need the thickness of the ones you need is, uh, uh, I've forgotten. The, the, it's like a medium, not the skinny ones. The skinny ones are no right, good. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. The, you need too, too medium too thickness. Too the medium, yeah, yeah, the medium thickness. They sell them in bundles. Oh, that depends on you got to shop around town. You know, if you try to yeah. order for, I know the price is from China, but uh, uh, these guys when they come in, they flip. So you need iron rods in the bottom. Okay, so that's gonna okay. take a lot of money. <laughs> that's gonna run you a couple, a couple of thousands. Yeah, because you're dealing with Lebanese and. Chinese Indians, they 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 dominate that. They dominate so the they sell them in bundles. They sell them in bundles. So you you need the the, the bags of uh bags of probably another seven hundred dollars seven uh uh spend seven hundred dollars again on the on the foundation and steel rods might run you a couple of thousand. The, the the foundation will cost you maybe five five thousand dollars. Okay. That's my last estimate yeah. when I think yeah, well, about five thousand dollars. Then then you have somebody come in and make those guys that make the brick the blocks, you can talk to them. They'll be like, man, I got a hundred dollars a day, man. Uh make me what you can. <laughs> you know, next week you get paid, I give you another hundred or fifty dollars, you make what you can. You had to have somebody over there counting what they make. You see okay. what I'm saying? Right. Until they get to the thirty five hundred blocks. Then you when then you had to hire your plumber and your electrician because when they, they they're doing the foundation they gotta come in and lay the pipes and, right. and the electrician gotta come in and lay his own fittings so they, them are gonna stick out of the foundation right so that goes into your wall yeah. the piping and the uh, uh, plastic it's like a plastic tubing you know that's what the electricians use right the plastic that plastic tubing, all that you gotta hire those people all come in as part of the foundation. Okay. Then the, mm -hmm. the only thing I say, if you got a concrete mixer, you cut back on time. 
That is not expensive. It's one hundred and twenty-five dollars a load. <laughs> okay. One hundred and twenty-five dollars a load, because those guys, what they're gonna do is they're gonna hire a team of twenty dudes <laughs> to to mix the concrete, pour, it, you know, my, by manual labor. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah, gonna yeah. cost you a lot, a lot more because you're gonna pay every guy. <laughs> Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. you got at least two concrete mixes. They're nothing but like $125. They mix it for you. You don't have to have a man shoveling back and forth, shoveling back. Like, no. All you do, the concrete mixer does it, it pours it. And then you have somebody with a rake that pulls it <laughs> all over, evenly all around the, uh, the the area. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, that, that that's what you need yeah. Somebody out there with a rig, somebody out there with a metal uh, scoogey. Is that what they call it? Scoogey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, it, it, you know, it, it spread the concrete all over evenly, you know, uh, around the, the foundation. That cut back on, on expenses. Because if you if you talk to some of those guys, they bring 20 of their friends, and each of them wants like, what, $50, $100 for the day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No. So that might run you, yeah, plus the material, you might only spend like $10,000. So have your concrete mixers, you know, and just have, you don't need, you know what I mean, probably like three people. One okay. guy mixing the concrete, as soon as he mixes it, he pours it, another guy raking to so the fire. The the other, yeah, this, as, until they spread it evenly. Yep. You see what I'm saying? That way you got yeah. a three-man team. Right in an old school way, you know, which would cost more. Uh, what, what kind of roof did you put on there? Roof corrugated, corrugated. Corrugated steel? Yeah, corrugated uh, metal sheets. It's like okay. aluminum. It's like zinc. aluminum. You're talking about zinc. Zinc, yeah, that's what it called zinc. Yeah, <laughs> zinc. Yeah, I've seen them, yeah. Yeah, yeah they, those, those Indians and Lebanese and Chinese, they dominate that too. They sell it by bundle. Yeah. So one, it, the whole thing ran me about another fifteen hundred dollars. Oh shit! Not me to cover the whole the top, but the thing about it is, it's either you do that or you go to those Nigerians. Those Nigerians, they tile. They use tiles. Why don't I never ask how much it is? They tile. They, they tile the thing, but I don't. Oh, I don't know tile, how much it is. Okay. With the thing with the corrugated zinc is. Because it rains so much over like 15 years, you gotta change it. You got it, it, it's gonna it's gonna rot out. <laughs> you know, when water hit metal a lot, it rot out over 15 years, you gotta to to change the roof. Okay. So yeah, that's 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 those are some of the but you see with with me because I when my dad was building and whatever, he said, Y'all walk with these dudes every step of the way, watch with you know. It'll pay him and let us work. <laughs> you see, yeah. it was like pops. I mean, you paying these guys and <laughs> we're just doing all the work. You say, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna need it one day, <laughs> and that's how I knew all the steps, even tile making and all that. But it, it's local. You got local. Tile. That's what I, I you I use the local tile. You buy the dye from the uh, Indians and, 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 and Chinese. And you set up the little concrete in the little mold, and you do your mix, your dye mix. You put it on there. You set it. <laughs> yep, that's that's a tire right there. You know, you're trying to make it cheap and affordable. That's what I I, I started off with. You know, it's yeah. been a long time that I you know ever tried, but now that my like my, really my pops is more, huh? I have to say, yeah, it sounds. But what we what we used to, because I told Mr. Lofton that like if we really push come to shove, we could just do the mud the mud houses because to me, they look fabulous and I know it's a really good thermal barrier and it's really cool. Right? It's real, yeah. yeah. It's, it's real right. thermal, it's but if you do the upscale way, it's an yeah. upscale way to do it with dye. Yeah. This country dye. Yeah. And then you got the molds. The molds, they sell them. They sell them at Lowe's. They sell them. At, I'll give you the info. What's the, uh, man, I got to look it up. But uh, in my in my in my database, it's the the mold. They sell the mold. They show you how to. It's a part A and a part B to the mold. They show you how to mix it to get a consistency, and then you have your sample blocks. 
these guys do it for you. And then they, the, the mold is there. When the mold comes out, you can make a thousand pieces out of that mold. Wow. You see what I'm saying? That yeah, saves yeah. you a lot from uh, going to, you know, like when you go to Lowe's, you got to buy one brick or one, uh, 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 you know, one brick or one, what's, well, you know, there's uh, uh, color stones. The real oh, yeah. stones you want to, yeah, you want to do like on your terrace. Say you want to do it on your driveway. And then yeah. you want to do it like in America. You got uh, solo, the solo <laughs> things on there. And you want those uh, 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 bricks. Low selling one for what? Like $2 or a dollar? Yeah, it's like a dollar. So you don't want to wanna buy them from Lowe's. You want to buy the mold <laughs> itself. And then have one of them boys, you know, make the different type of bricks for you. You come out a whole lot cheaper. We don't plan on buying all that stuff from over here. We want to, yeah, if anything, we'll buy the supplies, ship them over, and then we'll do everything over there. Yeah, because because uh, they even got a video. You show them boys. Most of them boys went to most of them trade schools. You okay. know, by Waterloo, like the Waterloo, like you go into what's uh, yeah, yeah, we, we when you live in free time, all yeah, that area full of trade school. schools. Yeah. schools. You go to them, those schools right there, talk to the instructor. <laughs> Say, I want some of these boys that uh, 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 are satisfied in these trade schools to come work for me. They a lot of them over there for everything you need. Hey, solar hey, panels, you, hey, you know I know that solar panels, 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 whatever we you need. About that. We talked about yeah. that. I said, man, we're going to go to the trade school and grab yeah. some of these cats. We show oh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, but I'm, I'm trying to get things together. I'm, 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 I show this boy these videos of these boys. What they do over here. What I really want, you know how fast these guys build these apartments and yeah. houses in America? If I could get them boys to do it like that, man, <laughs> have somebody pre-made pre -made everything, take yeah. them to the construction site, and they put it together that fast. <laughs> you know? Well, hey, that's what, that's my goal money. right there. Yeah, you just gonna have to line them up and then get all the materials and then just pay somebody just to steady do it, because that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the cheapest way possible because if we want to build like the type of structures that we would like to build, but my thing is the way the way this the West is going going to hell in a handbasket so fast, we might have to just get out of here with whatever we got. And when we get over there, we're just gonna have to make it work. And to me, the quickest way to put a house together would go to go to Mud Hut route. And I like those mud hut because when you go to the Timmy village. Man, them, them them structures were put together, man. I, I'm not gonna lie, I could live in one of them, no problem. That's right, yeah, yeah. But that's the old school way though. Yeah, it's, but I like what, I, hey, I just like I just like what I saw because the way them bricks was cut and the way they man, that shit was sh I mean, yeah, man, it's nice. And them things go through all kinds of seasons, rain, I know. Exactly. Whatever. exactly. And when it's cold outside, it's hot inside. Yeah, when it's yeah. hot. It's hot outside. It's hot outside. It's cool inside. Yep. So that's you don't need to buy insulation from America. That's your insulation right there. <laughs> you know. So yeah, yeah. Exactly. I, I I give you the details. This is Jamaican guy. The way he built his stuff. He started. He, he built some in, in New Mexico. Okay. He built some in New Mexico and Idaho. That's why it was it was base. They went to the University of Idaho. They did the whole research on that. Okay. They was trying to start that during the war. When they, uh, when the uh, I don't know what war that was. When America, the GIs came back, they was trying to build them cheap houses. So it was doing all type of research <laughs> like that. War, war so then he got he got a, a Idaho and got into them uh, books. He hit those books. He did that research. <clears throat> and he took some of the classes and he started putting up. His own structures. <laughs> well, that's what we plan to do. We, hey, we, yep. we, we know we need places to stay. And as people try to come over after we be the, because we're the pioneers now. So once we like let folks see, because you know me, I'm gonna turn the camera on and let folks see the whole process and see yep. me do it, so they all have confidence that they could do it, and then just kind of work with folks to come over and help them build. You know, we ain't gotta. We ain't got to have no mansions over there. All we need is the basic stuff and then be able to grow our own food. And then we can use the rest of that money for if we want to get into the, the, the mine business or you want to get into restaurants or you want to get in hotels or whatever you're trying to do, you'll have more money for that. 
Yeah, even that, you can use it to make roads. Smooth yeah. roads. Yes. All you need yeah. is the, compre the, the presser. You know the roller? You yeah. know when you go to the construction yeah. site, that guy is driving around the yeah, little thing that got a roller in the front? Yeah, yeah. That's all you need. You can make that same mix, dig up uh, 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 the area where you want to put the road, put it on there, and that same guy can come across and just level it. <laughs> and once that thing is compacted, you got a smooth road for life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see, but you know, over there, they're not using a lot of skills. They, you see, when you go, when you tell them, they want tar roads. You see what I'm saying? That's why when yeah. you go off the main road, the main road is bad. The, 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 the main road is good, but the, the neighborhood roads are bad. Because they want the, yeah. the, the, the main road to be like the, 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 the off road. And those yeah. off road, yeah, it's too expensive to maintain. But you come over right. there and try to teach them that they don't do it. So you just build your own. Yeah, we, that's when what we see. We were gonna build our own because we know we see how to how to. Cause we call them neighborhood roads. They they pretty much get washed out by the uh, the rain, and then they yeah. keep going back and forth with the heavy vehicles, and they dig these big old holes. Yeah, you know, we can't even pass through in a in a in a, in a regular car. So you need like a a pickup truck with some heavy duty uh, springs and shocks. Yeah. So yeah, we definitely yeah. noticed that, and I said to myself. That we're gonna have to do our own roads, which we had already anticipated. That's what we're gonna have to do. Yeah, this the same mix, those that clay mix. That clay mix. You can use them on the road. You just dig yeah. up the road, three or four feet deep. Yeah. Whatever red clay you get out of, you, it's part of your mix. Hey. Yeah. Two bad pieces of baloney. Sorry. Let me put that so, on my mute. Yeah. So. Uh, Channel Zero was saying it sounds like you probably spent about twenty five to thirty thousand for what you're talking about. So I think it's less than that. You probably spent more like twelve thousand for everything. What it sounds like, like like fifteen, like fifteen. There you go, fifteen thousand for everything, and you got a one bedroom apartment. And if we get a cookie cutter situation going, we probably can bring that cost down even cheaper. Yeah, because most people, uh, they start out. If they start out, you make it cheap on them. They they have you they they be you be the uh, they be uh, uh they they want to be your uh the, the tenant for like 10, 15 years. During that 10 or 15 year period, they're saving their money to build a concrete house. You see, the <laughs> yeah. problem is yeah. the, the, the bridge between somebody having a concrete house and somebody starting out. Yeah. In between, nobody is providing <laughs> some kind of landing bridge for somebody to be there. You know, like in America, you get a roommate, you say, 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 <laughs> then you get your own place. Yeah. Then, you know, you get, next thing you know, you qualify to get a house. The difference over there is some of them boys want to build a concrete house. In the meantime, they ain't got the money. <laughs> they need right. somebody to build some decent farm for the next 10 years where they're saving. <laughs> Then when they save enough money in 10 years, they you, they are tenants to you for 10 years, they go go about their business, they get a family. Yeah. Yeah. But you get them on lockdown for 10 years straight. Yeah. And you you see what I'm saying? And, I'm, and I'm sure you charge them by the years. So what you charge them? Yeah, I charge, and I don't charge too much. $500. Man, they're That's jumping it? on that thing. They was like, man, man, when you coming out to build some more, I say, hold up, man. <laughs> I got a farm going on, <laughs> you know, family farm. It's a whole bunch of other things going on. My hands in different pots. They exactly. said, man, you just started off. I say, in due time, what I want to do is go big, like how these dudes, the white man, do it over here. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, you see yeah, the white yeah. man come with a bulldozer or uh, whatever, clear the land, <laughs> laying the pipes. By the time you know, a new community come, you know, new community coming up. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it comes up in like six months. Yeah, media, that, that's structure. the same thing I'm trying to do. I you're talking to about yeah, you're talking about a subdivision, and yeah. that's yeah, what I'm. Yeah, there you go. That's, and that's that, what I'm. That's, that's what, what I'm, I'm good at to doing. Do. <laughs> that's what everybody's trying to do. Sure, subdivision. That's perfect for yeah. everybody because 
That'll well, help. that's what I've done for. It alleviate the housing problem and it'll generate income <clears throat> for us. It's exactly. the same way white men do it over here. Exactly. Yeah. And I've done that for 15 years. So I'm a civil engineer. So I know how to design roads, subdivision, lots. There you go. I did all that kind of work. There you go. There I you know go. how to do and that. This is what I was talking about. This is yeah. what I'm talking You can have clear roads. It's cheaper to maintain than, the than uh, asphalt. Asphalt, yeah. you're going to have to come in and repair and repair. Yeah. That's where the governments in Africa are failing. Because they got yeah. if they're gonna repair the main road, then the neighborhood road, somebody's gonna take an L. <laughs> yeah. And the neighborhood roads are taking an L. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. instead of doing concrete or doing uh this mud construction mixed with uh, uh to make clay into you know into hardening hardening the clay, they don't wanna do that. They want a concrete road or asphalt road. <laughs> That's the psychological problem of people over there. <laughs> That's their problem. Right. So instead of arguing with it. them, just build, have your own land, clear it up, <laughs> lay your own roads, <laughs> yes, build Man, your own houses, yeah. then yeah. everything done. People, people, you see people rushing to come over. Exactly. I tell you, African people, yeah. the ones that never are dreaming of coming to America in Sierra right. Leone and never got a chance, they want you to build a U.S. style house for them. Yeah, that's bragging rights right there. <laughs> I know. Bragging yeah. rights, right. really? But yeah. what they yeah. don't. But what? Uh, like uh, China Zero asking a question. But no, they don't have a a, a credit system over there like they got no. over here with lenders. We gonna, they they build no, the, the bank, they with do. the money the they have. No, they do. The banks yeah. charge ridiculous interest yeah, rates. But, you know, we're not trying to pay that ridiculous interest. So no, we're not like trying to go into a credit system. We don't want to. Yeah, we don't want to go into a credit 25%. system. Twenty five percent. I could, I could, I know my my brother is a CEO of a bank. You know, commercial bank. Yeah. yeah. My brother is the CEO of that. Before that, he ran a mortgage bank. And part of what he did with the mortgage bank, you can buy your own land, but it could let, borrow you money, and you pay him back. You can build your own house. Is that different ways they could build it for you, or you can buy the land and you build your own. That's what he did before he got this other job. But he, he, <clears throat> I know all his rates 24, 25, 30 <laughs> percent. That African banking is different. They yeah, take small money, they borrow you a thousand dollars. And you got to pay ten thousand dollars back. You got the interest rate sky high. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That's a little bit of money hey. to make ten times high. I know that's the reason why I said, like, no. When when Sub Zero asking this question, I'm telling no. If you're gonna do it, come over with the money and do it that way because we don't want to pay that. We don't want to pay interest here. Huh. No, I mean no thirty percent or whatever over there. No thirty so, percent interest rate. I mean, he he works for them. Whatever they tell him to do is what he's gonna do. <laughs> yeah, you see what I'm saying? Exactly. exactly. That's what it is. Because that's why I came. It's the same thing because I was coming up with mine. When I came up with mine, and he told me the rates, I said, "You know something, bro? I'm gonna do some research. The alternative building materials, and yeah, I'm gonna do know. my research. <laughs> I'm gonna find another way to build strong structures without because." When they borrow you the money, most people go, they buy concrete, they buy steel, they use car gator, they import everything. They go to Lowe's, buy all that stuff in there, <laughs> and take them over to Sierra Leone. <laughs> then when you go to Sierra Leone, you got to pay custom duty. You buying it at dollar rate, high dollar rate uh, in, um, in America. Then you go over there, you got to clear it off from the port. Then you got to pay for labor. You see, that's the way they think. They don't yeah, think about creating their own, going to Lowe's and replicating everything they got in Lowe's or Home Depot. They don't think like that. <laughs> you see yeah. what I'm saying? Right. They right. think I'm just right. going to Lowe's, buy everything in there <laughs> at high rate. You know what I'm saying? Then mm -hmm. the, use it in your house, and then you got bragging rights. Yeah. That, that's hustling it backwards. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? But that, hey, of, That's why it's an opportunity for folks who who want to do this work and have a few dollars put aside, this is what opportunity, this is why we talk about Sierra Leone the way we do, because this gives us a, a leg up, because 
a few thousand dollars over here. We pay that in rent. You take that same money over there, you can build these type of structures that the brother is talking about and not have to pay that interest rate. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so we're talking about the renters. I mean, most people rent until they're able to save up their own yeah, money right. so and buy the build their own house. House. That's right. A lot of people so are renting. You, zero, you're right. <clears throat> and that's the problem right now. You got too many people renting. looking for somebody to give them a decent place to rent yeah. till they get their money up <laughs> to build a concrete house. Yeah. Everybody want a big fancy house. They're looking yeah. at these people. You know what they told me? What? They said, bro, you you building houses for dudes <laughs> that are struggling. <laughs> struggle, struggle, struggle yeah, houses. Yeah, to pay you to pay my rent. How would you build a house for somebody that's struggling to pay your rent? <laughs> You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Why don't you build big fancy houses for the people that got bread? But if everybody's going to the people that got bread, somebody's gonna lose. Because the people right. that got bread, you know, they could they have money to build their own houses. If they want their rent, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's a choice. If you got that much bread to pay somebody ten thousand dollars a year for rent, some people say you might as well buy buy a land. You might want to buy dollars you're paying every year. It's, you it. see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I understand exactly what you said. That's the reason why. But when I, I build houses like that, it's it's saying, man, you build houses for people that are struggling. <laughs> you know, they, you, you gotta you gotta chase them around for them to pay your rent. Yeah. <laughs> but that's where the majority of people is. You can't say every one of them, you gotta chase them around. Not everybody like that though. <laughs> No, you yeah, there are a few black apples that you got to chase around. For but besides, that, I go to courthouse and go yep. to the courthouse and get a court order. The police come over there and evict you out, evict you out of the house. I don't have to chase you around. <laughs> yeah, they just I, I just go to court <laughs> and, and they, they send a, 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 a police officer over there <laughs> and he, he put a notice on there: do not enter. You enter is a violation of the court. You go, you going to jail. That's all I got to do. Yeah. But they don't want to do that. They'll be like, man, you got to chase these people around. One one year, they, they could pay you. The other year, they short. <laughs> this year, they... <laughs> but, bro, but it's a lot of them. I know. I know. The same way over That's here. That's where most of the people are. <laughs> it's the same way over here. It's the yeah. same thing. Ain't nothing, yeah. ain't nothing different. It's the same thing over here. When I used it's to the be same thing. Man, please. But like you said, that's a good idea because 500, 500 US dollars, pretty much a family can, they can get that money together. That's not a lot of money for them to put Yeah, together. that's what I'm saying. And even if they come to you, because one dude was like, uh, bro, yeah, uh, I got 350. I said, when are you going to get the other extra 150? Okay. Well, I'm talking to some people now to loan me some money and I'll be okay. I said, okay, let's come up with a little plan. <clears throat> Don't tell me 150. Give me a dollar a day. I give okay. you. Yeah, we said I don't want that. Well, you got a chance to do. The dude ain't got the money, and you got to come up with all these things to to let them pay, man. That takes it takes too much time. You got plenty of time to deal with these people. I said they ain't got it. I said give me a dollar a day, <laughs> you know, or two dollars yeah. if you got it. See, you pay up. <laughs> yeah. You got you in the house six months. You telling me well, I got three fifty. Within the next six months, <laughs> give me a dollar extra a day. <laughs> you see, what, then you can stay in the house the next year. Make hey, make perfect sense to me. Uh, sub, I mean, um, I could say sub zero. <laughs> uh, Channel zero said uh, once you build it, there's no property taxes, right? No, you pay for, uh, property taxes. You pay property taxes to the city. Low. I pay ten dollars for my structure a year. <laughs> Ten dollars a year. Ten dollars a year to well, the city council. What what city? What city is it in? What city are you talking about? It, it, that's part of Freetown. It's outside of. It's the outskirts of Freetown. So, but it's so called. It's city. part of Greater Greater Freetown. Okay, so let's say you you out in the provinces where we pay. It's the same thing. The, the city the city, the cities of Kenema, Bo, McKinney, whatever city you want to go to. The, so the city council to impose taxes. It's the same thing. Ten dollars a year. That might be cheaper. That might be like eight dollars. Or five dollars. Because it's free time, that means it's ten dollars. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, it makes yep. sense. Yeah, like like you go to Bull or Kenema, those cities, they might charge like eight dollars. You know? Yeah. All the smaller uh uh smaller towns, they might charge less. You know? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Maybe about five dollars is what I'm thinking. Yeah, I mean if you go outside if you don't go within both city limits or Kenema city limits. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about outside of the city limits. Yeah, they might all depends though. <laughs> they might okay. it depends on who you 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 run to because this president right here is strong on taxes, man. He's going hard on everybody. Everybody gotta pay. <laughs> everybody gotta pay. <laughs> they need money, I get it. But the thing is, not- the taxes that they so freaking low, it's like you're ridiculous compared to what we used to. Yeah, but what it is is uh the loan money outside and uh, on the loan money from the regular people or businesses. In the country, because they got what is called government bonds. That's another thing y'all need to look into. Government What's bonds, that? but over there they call it treasury bills. Treasury, bill. treasury, no, treasury bills. Treasury bills. And that's through that's through the banks, right? Yeah, through the banks. Okay. You okay. know, you go through the banks, they might give five uh five, ten percent, which is better than America. Yeah, America, yeah. most of these places they give one percent, yeah, VTI, Boo, Vanguard. Vanguard give you like two percent. Yeah, you put, you, you, yeah. You put two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in a Vanguard account. I they got pay, Vanguard. All they pay you is a thousand dollars a month. Yeah, I'm going to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you see, over there, it's just this government. This president is whatever on taxes. The president that was there before, man, yeah. you they, everybody was buying treasury bills. He borrowed money from people. You buy treasury bills, the government pays twenty five percent, thirty percent, easy. <laughs> you know this president kind of don't don't want to get into a whole lot of building and construction, but the president before that, he was making twenty five percent, thirty percent, easy. Everybody, you got some people they did nothing else. They got their money, dump it in the uh, treasury bills, get thirty percent every six months. <laughs> yeah, because the government was born from businesses and the regular people. You know, this president, you know, it's good to get y'all citizenship, but he's kind of stingy. He don't borrow a whole lot. So right now the rate is like 5%. Oh, wow. You see? Yeah, you get 5% of your money. But treasury bills is good if, like, you got, uh, you're not ready yet to, uh, like, you in America right now, right? Yeah. See, yeah. My, my, my housing go big. All that money that got collected in the bank, I could dump it in treasury bills because I'm not ready for it. I got an income in America. Let it build. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, Let yeah. it build at, at 5%. But when you draw, withdraw uh, like $50,000, 5% of $50,000 every six months, every six months you go to Sierra Leone, you, you yeah. keep all your money over here. You just go to the bank and withdraw that money. That's your spending money over there. <laughs> You, you ain't gonna be able to spend all that. You're gonna leave a lot back no. there. <laughs> You're gonna come back with money. Yeah, that's the yeah, case. That's what it's a, it, one of my cousins. She in business. All her money she gets, she's in a Lunga airport. She got a yep. small, uh, these uh, uh, huts. You know, outside Lunga airport, they, they, they rent them out. She made it real nice. You know, real, real nice people come from Lunga. They don't wanna go to Freetown, they stay over there overnight. She charged by like forty dollars a night. They collect okay. all, all our money, put it in a bank account. Like you go to commercial, come on, all those banks. They got an app. You download the app on your phone. You be in America and tap on your app and see how much money coming in. If somebody say I deposited this much of money for you, you go in and watch your balance. You can be in, here in America and tap on your app on your phone <laughs> and see how much money you got in. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That way, when you go back over there, you ain't got to take no, you ain't got to spend no, 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 you leave all your money over here. The money you got over there, that's what you're spending. Yeah. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, because you, it, it's, there's no stress on that money. It's not like our money over here where we got to pay bills, <laughs> we got to do whatever. That money might be yeah. sitting out there, you know, in the bank. Or you can dump into treasury bills. And let it grow at five percent. Yeah, you know, 
That's still you get your money, America, put it in the bank. Yeah. Whenever you go over there, right. that's what she's using. You're not, yes. you're not going uh, over there spending all the money. Yeah, Channel Zero saying uh, this might be a stupid question, but can you buy treasury bills over there and not be a citizen? Yeah, I think so. I think so because Lebanese and in Indian buy treasury a, bills too. Yeah, they could, but they would they would have to set up a bank account there in order to do it. Yeah, they, they got to set up a bank account there. Yeah, they, they could do it, but they have to set up a bank account with their U.S. passport if they wasn't a citizen, and they still could buy treasury bills then, right? They could buy treasury bills over there as an investor. Yeah, exactly. You coming in as an investor, you buy treasury bills. And my chores, and you open a bank account, and you can withdraw 100% of your money from your bank account. It's not like in America where they, they put a cap, like $5,000. $5, yeah. You can't go past $5,000 to send anywhere in the world. Out there, you can withdraw 100% of your money to come back to America if you want to. I mean, you might be over here. I'll tell you, like this girl, sometimes she go broke. She called the bank and said, man, let me get a couple thousands. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, they're wired over there. Yeah. That money right there. She, the, the, what she do, does over here, her job over here, she pay bills. That money over there building up. <laughs> okay. You know? I mean, things get rough over here and whatever. <laughs> she she called the bank or somebody or somebody over there say we draw this X amount of money and wire it over for me, man. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's how it is. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you so want to buy something it, it, over here or you, you know, whatever you need. Uh, you know how it is. All your paycheck, yeah. paycheck uh, bills got all your money. And then you want to yeah. buy something. If that thing is building up over there, you just uh, ask the bank, let me get a couple of, of that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. They, they send it over here. But the, the thing is, you're going to send, you're going to, when they send it over here, the exchange rate. Yeah. But it's still, it's still the same. It's, it's still, you're still getting money. You see, yeah, guys, it's money over there that you ain't worried about unless uh, you really need it, and then you withdraw. Yep. So basically, <laughs> I would say, Channel Zero, that the fact that you would definitely have to go over there so you can establish the account because they're going to need to see you. You're going to they need your passport uh, and a few other yeah, things. You can't, foreigners, foreigners, they got, foreigners can set up a bank account. Yeah. I'm just and withdraw 100% of it. They got to come yep. over and, and set it up in person. That's the only thing. Yeah, they can withdraw 100% of it and bring it to America, whatever you want. Oh, yep. So that's, yep. A, great, that's a great thing, man. But uh, it's getting late, so we're going to get ready to get up out of here. So if you got All any right, last bro. minute questions, put them in the, in the chat right quick, and we'll answer a few more, and then we get out of here, and then uh, we'll just try to make this a, a weekly thing where we come over and talk. This has been a good conversation. We didn't have all this whole stream. has been a great conversation. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, I'm sure people on the playback will be able to appreciate a lot of these things come up probably in people's mind, but we don't really cover a lot of this stuff. So if you got any questions, put it in the chat right quick and we can answer them before we get up out of here. I got to go to work in the morning. My first day back is tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling, bro. That's that bad feeling, it. bro. I don't want to do it, but I got to <laughs> do it, man. You know? You know how you feel when you live in Sierra Leone and coming back to work? Man, no. You, you know that Sunday morning before you go to school? <laughs> yeah. yeah. How you man. feel? Yeah. You don't want to go to school. <laughs> Let's see. West Coast says, so I can open up a bank account in Sierra Leone? Of course you can. Of course you can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah of course you can. And you ain't got to be a citizen to do that either. Yeah, you can withdraw 100% of your money. Yeah. Out of there. <laughs> yeah. All you need... All, excuse me, all you need is your passport, and uh, I think you need $100 to open an account. Yep. Yeah. The thing is, you got to be there in person in order to do it. Yeah, to do it. Then they'll set, they, they next ask them for an app, the app. Let yep. them download the app for you, yep. and it'll show you just like your regular apps over here, show you how much you got in your account. They could do text alert. They could do all that for you. <laughs> Yeah, so it's pretty the same the same as anywhere else. It's just, the only thing is you got to be over there to open it up, and you just need yep. to pass. You can't open it. Yeah, you can't open it from here. From uh, out. Yeah, you can't, you can't open it from here. You got to be there. You got to need a copy to add a tour. 
Go ahead. No, I was gonna say that's why you need to be, be, be at least become part of the tour. So when you come over, yeah, yeah. To Cuba, we when take you become part back. of the tours, you got a whole entourage of people that yeah. know every step of the way. They yeah. take you around to people, introduce you to people, make the whole process smoother. You know, real smooth. Real smooth. You don't have to worry about nothing. You're on a first name basis with top notch people. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know, this this is my fourth time going. So now I'll be going this this uh November be my fifth time. So now we just need to push for that land because uh now I'm ready to start building something now. Yeah. <laughs> about time. Hey, hey, building hey, right hey. up. Building hey. right up. <laughs> I didn't did, did buy traveling, so I got a couple more cups. Yeah. Uh, now it's time to build. You know? As long as you know somebody know. tries to walk you over there, or you can go over there. End of the year, you collect all your rent, you deposit all your money in the bank, <laughs> and then you can come yeah. over here. Don't have to worry about that money. No. The money you get over here, pay your bills. Pay your bills. <laughs> that right yeah. there. Yep. Yeah. I'm gonna try to phase out of, out of America because, like I said, my my wife is over there, so I want to be there with her. Oh yeah, <laughs> no, no, you, you. <laughs> and my two kids. <laughs> hey, hey, no, but I'm telling you, man, we have to talk offline, man. It's something I wanted to talk to you about, but I don't want everybody. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Well, I don't want everybody to get into it, particularly, you know, about your relationship and a couple of things I did for my wife, you know? So yeah. we got to talk about it, yeah. No <laughs> we got to talk about it. No. <clears throat> See, yeah, no. Start building too. Yeah, that's right. That's right, West Coast. I'm ready to get in there and start building as well. And I want you to, uh, Amara, I want you to uh, get in contact with me since you're building. And I'm a civil engineer. Maybe we can talk, see if we can come up with something yeah. offline. Yeah. Yeah, offline. We're going to talk about that. I, then I'll introduce you to my cousin, He's a okay. civil engineer too. He built bridges. He worked for the road road transport department okay. of, the, of the Ministry of of, of uh, Construction in Sierra Leone. So okay. you know, yeah, yeah, we gonna have to plan it out. You know, where I could go and we all all three go, us talk about you know about stuff. Yeah. But let, let me let me uh I got I gotta be at work in the morning too, man. I hit I hit right. this, bro. All right. Okay. You got to do the conversation. You got to cut it off to go to work, man. Yeah, we hey. got to do what we got to do right now, man. But we yeah. got a goal in mind, so that's all that matter right now. Yeah. Let me see. Uh, let me put my uh, let me put my email address in the in the, in the chat real quick. Okay. I'm gonna add mine. In all right. Here. Yeah, that's mine's right there. If y'all can yeah, use yeah. that and contact me, I have to go out to get it though. Yep. Hey, you gotta get it, bro. <laughs> gotta get it. Oh, Nobody ain't gonna give it to us. <laughs> nah. Oh, that's cool. You see it? Y'all see it? I get mine. Right. That's my I'll email address it, yeah. right there. You see it? Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Pop up All right. I don't think it popped up yet. It ain't popped up yet. No. no. Let me put let me put my phone number on there too. Yeah, it ain't popped up yet. And that's my Ooh. email, guys, in case you want to email me, and then we'll stay in touch with the brother. Yeah, put your email in there. Matter of fact, let me write it down with my pen. Oh. Oh. Let me Y'all ain't seen me yet? Let me see. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. It's in the private chat. Private chat. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I got you. Private chat. I got you. Oh, you got me? I okay. Yeah, it started with an S, oh. right? Yeah, S, yeah. Then the phone number is in the bottom. Yeah, I see it. Okay, I got you. Okay. All right. Peace, brother. Appreciate all the, all your good information, man. I'm sure people appreciate that. Yeah, man. I got to hey, I gotta be up at 3 in the morning, man. Oh, yeah. Get, get, get I'm out here. Man. I'm good. I ain't, I ain't got to be there to, to 8 o'clock, so I'm good. Uh, yeah, people, we got some good information today, boy. We're going to have to keep keep this going. Let me write this brother information down before I forget. But uh, 
Man, that was some great information there. Y'all know I can't see. Oh, okay, I see it now. Because we definitely need to be uh, grabbing as many contacts as we can. Because to make this move, we need as many hands on deck as possible. All that trying to go somewhere and be an island by yourself and do everything on your own and try to figure this stuff out. I ain't trying to do that. Anybody that's willing to assist, even if it's just good information, help me stop, help keep me from making too many mistakes. And it's a blessing as far as I'm concerned because uh, this is all new to everybody, you know? Yeah, I learned a lot too. That's why, hey, when he come, he he definitely... He definitely lay a lot on us, but uh, that's perfect. Tomorrow, all I got to do is just go get my load loaded, and then uh, I could turn around and wait till Saturday and take it early morning. So I really just got to go load mine and bring it back to the yard, and then I'll have the rest of the day off. So I'll probably come back tomorrow because I'm supposed to be doing some interviews with, um, uh, what is his name? Qu Quasi Boyd. Uh, in the Gambia, so uh, we've been missing each other, so I'm going to see if I can contact him tomorrow morning and maybe we can get a Friday night rumble, maybe bring Bo Money on since he's getting ready to go on his tour and uh, we can just chop it up about whatever, huh? it ain't got to be no particular subject because, you know, all our stuff be you know, we be on some, on some on some stuff, you know, so what's going on? What up, Joe? What's the word, Jack? Uh, I sent the package off, so <clears throat> I don't know if you had it yet. If you're not, you'll probably get it tomorrow, but I sent it off already. So uh, I'm sure you'll let me know when you got it. But uh, yeah, man, we we got a lot of work ahead of us, guys. We're going to get the land, build a house, build our own roads, all our infrastructure. It might not be no uh, electrical poles going to the... We're going to have to do everything on our own, septic tanks, all that you know what i mean but uh this is what nation building is about you know what i'm saying um a lot of times when we move places here in uh the divided snakes we move to areas that's already built up already has infrastructure already have houses already have curbs sidewalks alleys all that and we just move in somebody else did all the hard work so you can see why, you know, certain communities like, ah, oh, well, we don't want these certain folks in our community. Well, really, technically, it's their community because they built it up. You know, you can't, you can't uh, be mad at the truth. The truth is they built it. We didn't. So if they don't want you over there, you can kind of understand why. You know what I mean? Even though it's, it's illegal to try to uh, house and discrimination, it's illegal, but you can kind of understand the sentiment. So it's like we get to go to Africa and we get to build our own infrastructure, build our own properties. And you think I'm going to let somebody come in and do whatever they want after I didn't put forth all of this hard labor and effort? Yeah, I'm going to feel a certain kind of way too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I, I get it. I get it. You know, but like, like the brother said, you know, we get to be the pioneers and, um, you know, I'm willing to take it on, man. It's it's a it's like having a new lease on life, as far as I'm concerned. You know what I'm saying? Um, and we actually get some get a taste of freedom. We get to be a part of the majority. You know, how does it feel to live where in a community where everybody looks like you, right? The vast majority of the population looks like you. Police officers look like you. The the judges all the people in the in the parliament the president the vice president all the store owners majority of them are black owned uh, all your religious institutions black controlled right all your communities are nothing but blacks i mean come on now it's a beautiful feeling but uh if anybody got any few questions i'll take a few questions right quick if not then uh your boy gonna go and get up out of here. I think we had a real productive stream. 
Uh, shout out to Bro Money for coming on and sharing uh, his 18 years of experience and wisdom and uh, expertise in dealing with tourism. Uh, I'm just throwing my hat. I call him quite a bit and get a lot of uh, gems from him. So we definitely appreciate that, brother. And we will be booking the Liberian trip with him. I was going to go on my own, but I would much rather go and hang out with him because we always have a great time once we get together. So, you know, it is what it is. Great minds think alike. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, that tour is in uh, 2023. I think June is it. So they get me plenty of enough time to pay for it. Just send a few dollars every uh, every month. And then when they get closer to the day, just go on and accelerate those payments and have it out the way. So it's not a big bite all at once. You know, it gives me time to catch up with those payments. And uh, we're going to go to Liberia and tear it down. Two weeks in Liberia, baby. And then more than likely, I've been built up so much vacation time. I probably go to Liberia for those two weeks and then slide over to Sierra Leone since it's right next door and stay there for a week. And then make my way back to the divided snakes. Well, I might even go over there and stay two weeks. I might stay over there a whole month, two weeks in Liberia and two weeks in Sierra Leone. Um, Cause now it's time to like start making that transition to start pinpointing the land. Are we going to get free land? Are we going to buy land and start building something? Even if I just build a mud hut house for now and then come back in later with container homes. Cause that's my passion. So might do that, a one bedroom mud house, and then put a few dollars together to build the container home of my dreams right next to it. And then later on, either rent that mud hut out or use it for storage or whatever I decide to do with it. Uh, uh, this might be, this might not be the best question, but it is easy to meet women there. Well, I mean, you know, it's like women of women, no matter where you go, man. Um, you know, women women want to be with somebody that's a provider and that uh, has a plan. You know, protector, provider, and has a plan. So if you cover those three bases, yeah, you, you'll have no problem. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, good hygiene, uh, good grooming habits. It's going to be a piece of cake, you know. Um, I haven't seen no, nobody really struggle with uh, meeting people, men or women. So if, you, if you're if you looking for a wife, if you can take care of the three Ps, protection, provision, and, and you have a plan, you dress, you know, you got a nice uh, style of dress and you're well-groomed, yeah, you have no problem. <laughs> None at all, you know what I mean? Uh, so, yeah, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I am definitely loving it. So, um, and, and and of course, you most of the the population that believes in polygamy. So, if you have the finances, you know you can have more than one wife. You know, some some brothers got three, two, three, four. You know what I mean? So, if you got the finance, then hey, you can have more than one. So. It's not really a hard uh, uh, a hard sale, I should say that. It's not a hard sale. If you can cover the three Ps, you, you have a decent style of dress, you're well-groomed, and uh, you can have more than one as long as you can afford them. You know, you got to be able to provide for them. Housing, uh, food, clothing, that's it, you know? Ultimately, you start a business or whatever and employ them, then sky's the limit. You can have as many as you want. <laughs> and for the sisters, there's plenty of brothers, you know what I mean, that uh, you can you can hook up with, uh, either Christian or Muslim or traditional African religion. Uh, if you're not down with the polygamy, because some women might got a problem with it, then you have to maybe meet up with some of the brothers that certain tribes or certain individuals just don't practice that or maybe they don't have the income for it and just be they're happy with one wife so it's a little bit for everybody in other words so if that's all the questions i'm gonna get up out of here and uh y'all as i always say you know i love y'all try to give y'all some good information 
Uh, and then, and the, the more I see the demise of the West, I think it's more indicative that we come on and give you all more information because people might once they might not believe what they see and maybe they think that things are going to turn around and they don't need a place to escape to but so for those folks um we're going to go ahead and be the pioneers for y'all so later on if if you need us and you need the w- a way to get up out of here you know we've already made the connections and we'll be the bridge to kind of help y'all come over but uh just know we're doing some real serious work here behind the scenes and uh we definitely need some support guys so y'all see my cash app rolling on the bottom of the screen uh dollar sign uh r-a-k-i-n-k-h-a-l-i-q if y'all appreciate these streams and y'all want me to bring on more people because i have a lot of you know folks that i can bring on from behind the scenes that i you know i talk to people from time to time so to kind of bring this thing forward I think more minds we have, the better. So if y'all so inclined and you got something out of this stream, you know, hit the hit the cash app and donate because, uh, you know, this, this research takes a lot. Going there, learning everything, meeting people, you know, kind of bumping my head, uh, learning. Uh, it's, it takes a lot. And a lot of it, I usually use my own money because I really believe in this. So... If y'all believe in it, you should help. You know, you should help, Cause especially if uh, this 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 sucker go belly up and you need a place to go to. You know, your brother doing all the work, and I'm using my own money to do it. So if y'all help, I will remember who put forth effort. So if you call me and and you need you in a you're in a state of need, guess what? I'm gonna think back like, okay, this person was always there. You know, what I'm saying donating a few twos and fews. So hey, I got you. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here. Let me go get a, do a few things in preparation for my load tomorrow. And um, just know tomorrow I'm going to try to come back on, even if it's just me. And uh, maybe I'll bring on my son so he can talk about his experience in getting his citizenship. I'm so proud of him. He just don't know. To, to be so far advanced where he, where he is, and he's only 25, you know, five years in the Navy. He was a high school wrestler. He was a uh wrestling captain went to state a few times and five years in the navy and now he lives with me and uh he's getting ready to go into the trucking business with me so got his citizenship and man it's just a beautiful thing man beautiful thing met him somebody over there and uh he's crazy about so we're looking to do some beautiful things over there so um y'all stay tuned we got a lot for (laughs) y'all let me get up out of here love y'all peace and air grease.